Hello, does everyone hear me? Hello, hello everyone. Happy Valentine's Day. Can you say hi, Alfred? I thought it was fitting that we start with a kitty here because we're playing a game called Hustle Cat. Yes, Hustle Cat. It's about kitties, but not this one. This one wants to go play. You go play? Okay. Let's uh, get this working. Where is, here we go. So yeah, I thought we'd do something nice and relaxed today. Just play a visual novel since it is uh, that time of year. And uh, let's see how I'm gonna pull this up. Push play and it should pop right up on the screen here when it comes alive. Uh, if you've never heard of it, Hustle Cat is a visual novel, a romance a dating sim. Um, I thought about doing Dream Daddy, but then I thought about it and Everybody knows Dream Daddy. Everybody's heard of Dream Daddy. So I thought I'd play something maybe folks hadn't heard of that's uh, super fun. And it's not showing up. Active PC game. Maybe because it's Steam it's not showing up. So let's just add it in. Add game capture. Screen capture? Let's try screen capture. Window. Hustle cat. There we go. Well, that's not where I want it. Um, let me know if y'all can hear the game. Let's get rid of that. And put that back up there. Alrighty, can y'all hear the game? Right now it's just music playing, but uh, make that bigger. The options, SFX, music, full screen, let's do that. Hello Kazune, Daniel, Paul, Handsome Ratch. Uh, doing pretty good today. All right, y'all can hear the game. All right, this is one of the few games I've actually, like, completed everything. I got, I mean, it's not big. It's a visual novel, but I got all the trophies. I did everything um, back when I was working at Mattress Firm, which meant I had so much time, so much free time in the world. Uh, honestly, I don't know which look. I feel, I feel like that's closer to my look. I don't know. I'm going to go with the longer hair. Um, address pending degree. Yeah. <laughs> Skills, rest management, nutrition, consumption, meme curation, 12 words per minute. This is definitely me, right? Yeah. It's definitely me. Greg's list. Ha! <laughs> um, but that's really cool. You can change that in the game, but we're just going to go with that. This is me. I think I fell asleep on the couch again. How do I... Oh, okay. Here we go. Little lasers of sunlight zapping right onto my face from the middle of the curtains. I think they've been specifically aimed to burn out my eyes. Does it continue when I click or is it just automated? Do I need to... Oh, I had to click right there. Okay. I had this weird dream about a goth band. <laughs> what is it? Like noon? Jeez. Not my fault. The couch pulls you in like you're drowning in bread dough. My spine pops in loud protest as I swim free from my bread dough cushion trap. I'm gonna have to apologize to Aunt Wendy. I'm probably leaving a dent in the shape of my ass in the cushions. <laughs> ah, I'll probably have to apologize for a couple things, actually. Ooh, boy. Okay, I know this looks bad, but it's almost not even my fault. I can't help that clutter is naturally drawn into my gravitational pull. I've never tried that excuse before. Honestly, it makes me feel a little more comfortable, you know? Like I really live here instead of just couch surfing at my aunt's. Or like I'm living in a furniture catalog. Not that I'm ungrateful. Aunt Wendy is awesome to let me use her apartment while she's away. She's helped talk mom and dad into letting me come all the way out to the city too. The city, the bright lights of the city. She's pretty cool. I hear rustling behind me like fingernails on cardboard. Makes me pause for a second, but I jump as I realize what it is. Mochi, knock it off. <laughs> My friend has a white cat named Mochi. The living trash bag disguised as a cat stares indignantly from the pizza box, trying to scrape up dried cheese off the bottom again. His little mushed up face probably trying to stare me down, but it's kind of hard to tell when he's looking with crossed eyes. Mochi. <laughs> so yeah, this cat, uh, this cat, yes. Yeah. This game has a lot of cats in it. Uh, as you can tell from the title. Uh, more shall be revealed. I clap my hands a few times to break the stalemate. He jumps at the sound and then waddles back to the bedroom in defeat. 
I guess since I'm up too, I might as well get up to whatever I'm gonna do today. I shuffle to the curtains and throw them open. My laptop is still sitting open on the coffee table. Oh yeah, job searching, I guess. We all been there. Oh, hey Batman, you wanna come see us? My laptop, oh yeah. I plop back down on the couch, sinking into the cushions and take a look. So many tabs here. Where, in, where did I leave Greg's list open again? So yeah, we're still looking for a job. And fresh out of college, I guess. That one or this one? Maybe this one? Nah, that's another cat video. Hey, Batman, what are you doing? I was up all night watching Jelly Donut, the cat who balances donuts on her head. I have no idea how you get a cat to do something like that. Guess that's why Mochi and I aren't internet famous. I find the tab and start scrolling through listings again. It's not like anything new has gone up since yesterday, I bet. Sidewalk cleaner alert. Intern. College credit only. Internet comments section proofreader. Fundraiser street team intern unpaid. Yeah, it's been like this all month. Can you blame me for giving up and watching cat videos? I remember those days. I know this kind of thing's supposed to take time, but try telling that to mom or dad or my savings. Any of those could send me back home at any time. Hey, Akatsuki. I have not seen the video yet. I saw you post it, but I've been avoiding looking at it. If I get too excited, it's gonna, it's gonna distract me. <laughs> I can fall back into Lord of the Rings obsession so hard. Oh, Batman. Batman, what did you do? What'd you do, Batman? Say hi. Say hello. Mwah. I really have to get this done before Aunt Wendy gets back. Just thinking about writing another cover letter is making my will to exist erode away. That's why you just write one and then you just change the little details. I'm gonna go for a walk. When I got here, I expected to be buried in noise from the city's traffic and crowds, but it's pretty quiet. The apartment's on a side street far from the main bustle. The noises of the city are a distant hum, like the buzz of an old TV. I have to walk like 20 minutes to get to the train, but I rarely leave the neighborhood, so it doesn't matter. Living a small town life in the city, I guess. Whatever, I get plenty of adventure in the neighborhood. I can just set out in any direction and find something new, even if I've been down that way before. Sure, I get lost a lot, but that's half the fun, right? I turn a corner at the end of the block and end up on a tiny side street I haven't tried yet. Neatly arranged trash cans line the sides of the road. I think I'm behind some stores right now. I'm expecting a dead end, but the road suddenly curves to the right. It looks too narrow for cars, but the faded white lines marking the middle seem to claim some brave drivers could cry to try their luck. I decide to follow the sharp bend in the road. After I pass a tall partition, I'm surprised by what I see. <laughs> Cat Cafe. A squat three-story building, painted so ostentatiously bright it'd be impossible to miss, sits in front of me. A cat's paw. Is this a pet store or something? Maybe I can get a dumb toy for Mochi. As I walk to the front doors of the building, I don't see aisles of pet food I expected. Instead, it looks like there are couches and tables in neatly arranged rows. It's a cat cafe! One of those pretentious restaurants with a pithy nonsense name, huh? I can feel my interest deflate. But as I'm about to return and continue walking, I notice in the window a sign that declares, now hiring. I'm hardly dressed for an inquiry, but might as well give it a shot. I look to my right as I walk up to the door and see a little orange and white cat lying belly up, sunning itself against the window. It doesn't seem terribly sanitary to have a cat in a restaurant, but whatever, I like cats. Bells tinkle delicately as I tongue on the handle. The heavy door creaks open. This place is so classy, it feels fake. It looks like a game board exploded in here. Isn't that what the palace was like in Wonderland, like with the cards and stuff? Is a purple cat gonna start talking to me? Though none of them are purple, there are a lot of cats. I can count at least eight off the bat. They're all over the place, romping around the floor, sleeping on some of the built-in structures. I've barely had time to take it all in when I hear a voice call out to me. Welcome, please sit wherever you'd like. I shuffle in place for a moment, at first unsure of where the voice came from, and then of whether I want to sit in or if I want to keep this strictly business. Uh, actually, I start as the source of the voice looms into view. He appears suddenly from the second story landing and covers the length of the floor in a few long strides. You look confused. Is this your first time here? Would you like me to explain a bit about how the cafe works? I'll be happy to give you a tour. His eyes are gentle. He's one of those people who smiles with his entire body. It's positively infectious. Ah, ah our first victim. Uh, but he's not what I'm interested in. 
keep your eyes peeled on who you might be interested in. Let me know. But I have a feeling I know who I'm going for. <laughs> I'm here about the job, actually. Oh! His pause is brief, but worries me a little. Is it really that surprising someone would come in and ask about a job? Did, it do, did I do it wrong? <laughs> Look at that little black and white cat on the couch. It's so cute. Oh, I love all the detail. Oh, great. We don't get a lot of responses. I think it's because Mr. Graves only puts the sign up in the window. He doesn't want to advertise anywhere. Good thing I came in then, huh? You're right. His smile is broad, but his eyes creep to the back of the cafe like he's looking for an escape. Okay, you can take a seat and I'll go get the owner. He'll be able to tell you a little about what he's looking for. You got it. Oh, and what's your name? Avery. Avery, cool. I'm Landry. Nice to meet you. Okay, I'll be right back. He bounds up the stairs and disappears. I begin to sit at the little cafe table, but freeze halfway as I hear a faint exclamation of dismay. It's followed by thundering footsteps, then by Landry's return. Avery, I'm so sorry. W what? I didn't offer you any coffee. Would you like some? Oh, don't scare me like that. Sure. You got it. He vanishes into the back again and reappears, carefully balancing a stout white mug atop a black saucer in one hand and a tiny creamer in the other. Gently, he sets the mug and creamer before me. I forgot to ask how you take your coffee, so I brought you some milk. Gotta have milk. Gotta have milk and some Splenda. But otherwise, I like it dark. There's some sugar on the table if you'd like it. Thank you. I'll check with Graves this time. I mean it. Landry bounds to the back room and is again out of sight. A Siamese cat timidly peers at him as he goes, then directly at me with a wide-eyed, worried look. Aw, oh, baby. I give it an awkward smile and nod before I realize I'm treating a cat like a stranger in the elevator. <laughs> I dump most of the milk and three sugars into my coffee before I get it to the consistency I like. I pour what should be a little splash of extra milk, but half the creamer spills in. Meow. The cat's looking at me like it's offended by what I did. What? Like a cat knows anything about coffee. Pippin once accidentally uh, drank some coffee. <laughs> she ran laps around the living room. Uh, when Landry finally returns, he's not alone. This is Graves, the owner of the cafe. Graves, this is Avery. hey -o! He looks like he should own a bookstore that insists it sells tomes, not books. Maybe like he sells crystals that balance your chakras. Or maybe this is what the owner of Cat's Cafes looks like. I've never seen. Uh, his eyes, they're two different colors. I can't focus on both of them at the same time. Which one am I supposed to look at? My attention is sucked into his icy blue eye. Is he wearing a contact to complete his dark renaissance look? I think it was his eye. Yes, it was this. Huh? He had the eye of a vulture, a pale blue eye with a film over it. Whenever it fell upon me, my blood ran cold, and so by degrees, very gradually, made up my mind to take the life of the old man and thus rid myself of the eye forever. Uh, excuse me? Telltale heart, you were looking at my eye. <laughs> Kids, didn't you read that in high school? I love this weird old man. Guess who my favorite is? <laughs> well, yeah, but... Iridis heterochromia. It's more common in cats than humans. What a weirdo. I'm not sure I want to work for a guy like this. Is that gonna be on the test? Oh, cool. Might as well be nice to your new boss. Hopefully. Oh, cool. I didn't know that. I might as well humor him. If the guy's gonna sign my paychecks, he can rattle off as many weird cat facts as he wants. Graves, would you mind telling Avery a bit about the place? I think it'd be good if you talk about what we do here. Graves looks like the notion is causing him physical pain. I'm not too keen on this idea either, Chief. You didn't do that already. Don't you think it sounds better coming from the owner? You're gonna be doing the interview anyway. Good point. Landry, this cafe would collapse into rubble without you around to keep me on track. <laughs> All right, Avery, I didn't prepare a speech, so you'll have to forgive me. I'm a little surprised to hear that, but I guess there aren't any Poe stories he can quote for the situation. I like to take care of strays. I like coffee. I like good desserts. I like a beautiful room. I wanted a place where I could have all those at once. That's how a cat's paw was born. The cats here are from the neighborhood. Usually they want to come here, so I don't have to convince them to come in. Forever home. 
pithy. Hate that term. But the cats who want to be adopted are listed on the wall over there. I'm a good matchmaker for people and cats. I can tell who's a good fit for the cat's personality. If they meet my standards, they've got a new family member. It's good you help them find homes like that. Well, if I had the room, I'd just keep them all. <laughs> he totally means that, doesn't he? He's my soulmate. Cool, I get to be interviewed by a cat hoarder. I don't know, it's probably better that way, right? Who knows? <laughs> Follow me, we'll talk on the second floor. Before he finishes the sentence, he's already three steps up the stairs to the balcony. So much for the introduction to the cafe, I guess. I shake my head a little and follow him. After all, I really need a job. We make our way up to the second floor balcony, which except for us, is only occupied by those amazing looking cakes in the display case. I wonder if I can get a slice on my way out. Graves leans down over the balcony of the cafe and raises his voice to the people below. Or the cats, I guess, since cats are the only thing I can see from here. Hayes, will you get us some coffee? Is that the chef? I haven't seen anybody here besides him and Landry. <coughs> oh, I already had a cup. Is that going to stop you from having another? You can't have enough coffee, especially when Hayes is the one to make it. Ah, oh, I agree so much. I don't think I met Hayes. You may have. You might not know yet. Oh, I love this weirdo. Graves folds himself into the slender chair at a corner table. He pushes the opposite chair away with his foot, nudging it just enough to turn it towards me. Come, sit down. Let's talk. You don't have to be so stiff. Interviews are boring. Make it interesting for both of us. No pressure, huh? Graves sits with this sort of grim pump, like he's sitting in a skull throne and a raven's going to land on his shoulder at any time. Maybe it's more like he's about to roll a die with a lot of sides. <laughs> I bet he's a nerd. I take the seat across from him. Just so you're aware, we aren't starting without coffee. Uh, okay. You can talk, of course. I meant the interview. Okay. Out of the corner of my eye, I notice a tiny slip of a blonde man st standing at the balcony entrance. Oh! I jump a little. When did he get here? I didn't hear anybody come up the stairs at all. Is this guy a ghost? Graves looks like the type to hire ghosts. He looks terrified by my shout. I think I scared him more than he scared me. Gingerly, he sets two mugs in front of Graves. Thank you, Hayes, but you should give Avery the other mug. He sounds like he's reminding a child to say thank you. Uh, uh of course. Hayes glances up at me. Our eyes meet for a millisecond before he suddenly finds something very important to focus on downstairs. He pushes the cup towards me without looking back. Uh, thank you. Graves' rings clack against the porcelain of the cup as he takes a drink. Perfect as always, I don't know what I did without your coffee. It's nothing special, really. He talks like it's the first time he's spoken today, quiet and a little hoarse. If that's all, I'll go back to the cats. That's fine. Hayes slips back down the stairs just as quietly as he arrived. That kid would make a great ninja. So the fun thing about this game is literally every character is an option. So whichever character you like, that you can date them if you want. Though the owner is only allowed on, I think, subsequent playthroughs. I think you have to unlock him. But of course I have already done that, so haha. -ha. I look down at the coffee and see a sleepy cat face staring up at me from the foam. I've only ever seen latte art on the internet before. Did Hayes do this? I take a sip. It's not bad if you like coffee, I guess, but it could really use some sugar. There are packets on the table, but I can't bring myself to ruin the foam cat. Now let's interview. I'll start you off easy. What's your favorite breed of cat? This man knows what's important. This <laughs> a lot. Hmm. My cat. Do you know any other languages? What about ciphers? <laughs> Dude! Oh yeah, I am learning some Japanese. That's, let's see. Uh, ie. Uh, that's the word for language. Shimasen, shimasen. Uh, I think that means, uh, no, just Japanese, I think. What marine animal would you say best represents you? I'm a penguin. I can't go anywhere, I'm lazy, I'm fat. What genre of music would you use to describe your work ethic? 
classically hardworking. <laughs> I'm not dead, just resting. On a scale from one to 10, rate me as an interviewer. I'll give you an absolute, and I will give you a 7.5. Draculas or teenage wolves? Oh my God, Draculas. Just kidding with the last one. Where are you? Where are you though? Interesting, good, I like interesting people. I love this man. I forgot how goofy this game was. Ah. <sighs> he leans forward, appraising me with this terrible smirk on his face. He's like the cat who ate the canary. Maybe I don't want to be interesting by his standards, but it feels kind of flattering nonetheless. Uh, thank you. You start tomorrow. <gasps> Thanks, yay, yay, celebrations. Ugh, reminds me of when I got my pizza job. All I did was walk in and say I was available. It did not turn out to be an awesome, magical cat cafe. <sighs> Alas. Don't run off yet. I have paperwork for you. Oh yeah, of course. Graves pushes away from the table, coffee cup in hand. He nabs my saucer, even though I'm not quite finished, and slinks down the stairs. He returns as if he'd never left, trading the empty coffee cups for a small stack of papers and a pen. He places them in front of me. So what will my job be? We'll see. <laughs> Did he hire me with no position in mind? Is this how this guy usually works? I know that, like, I know this character and I know the story, so it's cool, but if a boss hired me and said, we'll see, I think I would leave. <laughs> I don't think I'd take that job. I feel like I'm in a daze. Too much information and too much coffee. I take the papers and skim them, signing pretty much anywhere I see an X in a line. What's it all for, and why is there so much? Probably taxes and stuff, I don't know. Who cares, I've got a job! I push the papers back towards Graves, and he eagerly scoops them off the table. Perfect, we open at 11, be here at 8, we'll have you help with the morning prep. My displeasure must be pretty apparent, because his mouth cracks into another smirk. You can work a later shift after training, you won't have to deal with those cursed mornings for too long. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Now go, I have a lot of work to do before tomorrow. You need to get to work fixing the sleep schedule of yours. Uh, okay. He seems lost in his own world now, poring over the paperwork I filled out. I guess there's all sorts of tax stuff you have to deal with hiring people. Why would he do it so casually? Whatever, not my problem. I head down the stairs. Landry's back. He looks uncomfortable waiting at the foot of the balcony. So, I'll see you tomorrow, coworker. Oh, congratulations! You can meet everybody else tomorrow morning. I'll make sure they're all ready for a meeting when you get in. How many people work here? Well, there's me, Graves, of course. You met Hayes. Finley, Mason, Reese. That's it. It shouldn't take too long to get to know them. Okay, great. I'll see you all tomorrow then. Great, see you. Da -da -da, you have a job. I'm gonna live it up a little. I'm gonna paint the town red. I finally have a job. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a cute little game. Mm. Cute dating and cats. What more could you want? And coffee. That really is everything I need. And a weird goth nerd who's totally my type. Hey, Jeff. Welcome. I've actually done everybody's uh, storylines, and they're all pretty cool. But I think, personally, Graves is definitely my type. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. We actually just had a cat cafe open in my area. Um, the debut of it was slowed down because of COVID, but it's the, they're now open and doing well and apparently adopting out some cats, which is uh, pretty cool. I would love to go see it one day. Right now it's only by appointment, so I haven't been over there. But uh, eventually, this little intro is so cute. I should look up and see if these folks have made anything else. I don't actually know if they have. I'm gonna look it up while we watch this cute intro. Alright, published by Date Naito. Released in 2016. Let's see if Date Nido has done anything else. 
I got lost and didn't end up painting anything, but it was a nice walk. As I head home, I get the distinct feeling of being followed. I didn't really know that was a thing that actually happens, but it's hard, hard, hard not to notice when you see movement out of the corner of your eye. Oh, they did We Know the Devil? Ooh, that's another... I haven't actually finished playing through it, but We Know the Devil is a horror-themed visual novel. Uh, kind of like Stranger Things a little bit. I didn't realize it was also by the same folks. We'll have to play that sometime. All right. I turn around. A sleek black cat stands in the middle of the road. It sits down when we make eye contact and thumps its tail testily against the pavement. It's got different colored eyes. I guess heterochromia really is common in cats, huh? There's no such things as coincidences in a visual novel. Should I, like, try to bring it to the cafe? They take care of strays, after all. I should try. I crouch down slowly as I can and reach my hand toward the cat, beckoning to it. It doesn't move. I make those little smoochy noises that seem to work on some cats. Here! It works on mine. This one doesn't seem impressed. It bends its ears back and looks away, still for a moment before standing up and slinking into an alley. I guess I should leave this to the professionals. <laughs> this music is so good. I wonder if the soundtrack's available anywhere. Time to celebrate. I'm gonna wreck this pizza I grabbed from Pizza Lloyd's on the way home. I pick up a wet can of cat food for Mochi from the corner store. Figure we both deserve a celebration. Mochi, get your fat lump out here. I have good news. No answer or indication he's even in the room. You know, he never even asked how my day was. I know how to do this. I walk over to his food bowl and crack the lid of the wet food. In a flash, he's at my feet, tail shaking like a rotor behind him. Come here, you big moron. I give him a scratch behind the ears before I dump half the can in the bowl, and the feeding frenzy begins. He acts like I never feed him. Whatever. I'm about to go do the same to this pizza. <laughs> After a quick jaunt to free myself from the shackles of non-pajama clothing, I flop back down on the couch, dinner in hand, laptop in my face. <gasps> it looks like there's a new Jelly Donut video. It's a video of her sleeping in a donut box. I love that dumb internet cat. She's always doing something ridiculous. I wonder how her owner gets her to do these tricks. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, idiot. <laughs> that flooring seems familiar. Where are these filmed? I spend the rest of the evening picking through video archives. I can feel myself slinking into the bread dough couch cushions. <laughs> Meow. It's so early. What's his problem? Meow. I bet he just wants the other half of the wet food. This is why I don't get it for him that often. I ex excavate myself from the couch and do what I can to mitigate the bedhead situation I have going on. What time is it anyway? I grab my phone. 7.40! Oh, hell. I'm gonna be late for my first day of work. I take the world's fastest shower, but there's no time to dry my hair. I'll have to hope I run fast enough that the wind resistance will do the job for me. No time to sort through my duffel. I'm gonna throw on whatever looks cleanest. It's not like Graves said anything about a dress code, so whatever. Moshi trails me closely, howling more and more insistently along the way. It's like he doesn't care about my punctuality at all. No time to mix the wet food the way he likes it. I dump a scoop of kibble in the bowl on the way out the door. I haven't seen a cat so offended since the one watched me mess up coffee. They can both deal with it. I can't believe I'm almost late to my first day of work at my first job. What a great first impression to leave. Thanks for hiring me, Avery the Flake. Ah, I remember those days. I think the pizza place was my first job. Very similar situation. Except my manager threw the wrist. <laughs> my manager got really mad that I uh, did not charge someone an extra 25 cents for pepperoni, so he threw the register on the floor. It's bad. It's bad. I start out in a full sprint to the cafe, but it's only about a 10 minute walk, so it looks like it might not be as bad as I thought. If I run, I can make it in less time. Here it is, a cat's paw. I got a good look at it when I was here yesterday, but it feels totally different when it's your workplace, you know? Kind of nice to think about. Hey, Avery. Landry peeks his head out the door frame and waves me in. I'm surprised by how many people are standing around. Graves, Landry, and Hayes are there, but so are a few others I've never seen. I only see a few cats now, but they seem utterly disinterested in everything we're doing. They're all piled in a sleep cluster by the window. 
I feel a little embarrassed that I'm so disheveled, but I'd rather be on time with wet hair than late and looking perfect. Good, you decided to challenge the morning sun after all. Now that the star is here, we can start this show. Still as weird as yesterday, I see. Caught another sucker, boss? That's esteemed co-worker to you, Reese. You just keep collecting these strays. Uh, before we get too far, everybody should introduce themselves to Avery. Uh, we've already met, and you already know Graves. Did you meet Hayes yesterday? Briefly. Hello, Hayes. Uh, hello. He looks like he's going to try and slip between the cracks in the tile. How does a guy like this handle a job that deals with people? Hayes is a great barista. He's a great help in the kitchen, but he likes to spend a lot of time with the cats, too. Hayes flashes me a quick look. The side of his mouth upturns ever so slightly, like he's trying to smile, but he's out of practice. I reach out and shake his hand, and he's practically bracing for impact. Before I reach him, a bright light flashes at the corner of my vision. Whoa, is that a camera? Oh, sorry, sweetie. I thought I turned the flash off. I whip my head to the other side of the lineup. The girl on the end is aiming her phone directly at me. Sorry, don't mind me. I just want to commemorate our new employee. I'm Finley, and I take care of social media. I like Candid, so I'll try again later when you've forgotten about it. Finley is also... Graves! I know what you're going to say! Don't ruin the surprise! Graves lets out a soft bark of a laugh. Alright, alright. You tell Avery whenever you're ready. Thank you! The two in the middle of the lineup look beyond unimpressed. One is the smart mouth guy, Reese, and the other looks like someone I wouldn't want to mess with. Finley puts her hand on the shoulder of the tough-looking woman standing next to her. Since she's not going to introduce herself, this is Mason. She's our head chef. Or our only chef, I guess. Hmm. Well, nice to meet you both. Yeah. Finley reaches up and places her hand on the, against the back of Mason's head. She pushes her head forward, forcing Mason to nod. I'm amazed Mason is putting up with this. Wow, that's the most you've spoken all day. She likes you already, Avery. Mason makes a little noise that could either be a laugh or a grunt. Maybe it was both. How kind of you all to save the best for last. I'm Reese, and I'm the one you'll be answering to after Graves, so you better stay on my good side. I could have sworn Landry was second in the command here, so I don't know what this kid's talking about. I didn't even see him at all during the interview yesterday. I'm on cat detail today, but don't think that won't mean I'm take keeping an eye on you. Cat detail must mean taking care of the cats, obviously. I'm learning quickly! <laughs> I don't know why the second in command would be so eager to tell me he's gonna clean litter boxes. Maybe it's a weird status thing here. Ew. Uh, I'll be on my best behavior, I guess. Good. Okay, that should be everybody. Avery, you'll be training with me today. I hope that's okay. Fine with me. It looks like I'm no longer needed. I have other work to do. I must go brood upstairs. You know where to find me. Graves slinks to the back of the cafe, and I think I hear footsteps on creaky stairs. Mason and Hayes disappear after him. Avery, did you have breakfast? We're gonna have something to eat before work if you'd like to join us. It's tradition. That sounds great. I fed my cat, but I forgot to feed myself. Reese has already seated himself with the long booth seating along the wall. He scoots two of the tables together, and Landry pulls over another chair. Great, sit and relax. Mason's finishing breakfast. I move to take a seat, but Finley blocks my path. Avery, before you sit down, I have a question. What's up? Uh, is that... She, her voice drops almost conspiratorially. She leans in to whisper. That's an Akia shirt, isn't it? He's my favorite, too. A what? Akia? From Blast Zone? From what? Look, you don't have to play dumb. I get it. No, I really have no idea what that is. Is it a show? Is this shirt from something? Oh, um, no. Never mind, don't worry about it. Oh, <laughs> I just thought it was a cool shirt. <laughs> now you've got my interest. What is Blast Zone? I don't know if it would be your type of game after all. Oh, it's a game. I like games. Try me. Well... It's a story about men's passions clashing in a life or death struggle. Sounds dangerous. Oh, it is! But it's also romantic. Romantic, like love blooming on the battlefield? That type of thing? Was that a Metal Gear reference? 
<laughs> that was totally a Metal Gear reference. <gasps> you do get it! Maybe I'll lend it to you sometime if you prove yourself worthy. I'm not really sure what that involves, but sure. Okay. She gives me a grin and a wink and then takes a seat at the table next to Reese. She might be my favorite after Graves. I noticed somebody set the table while I was talking to Finley. Mason and Hayes should be out in a minute, Avery. Come sit down. Sure. Where should I sit, though? What if there's some unspoken rule about this sort of thing? You never know with new groups. Landry answers the conundrum for me by beckoning to the seat between him and Finley. Quietly, I take it. Mason emerges from the back with a large tray atop each hand. One tray has a giant stack of French toast. The other is some kind of egg thing. I'm not sure, but it looks amazing. Whoa. I had no idea how hungry I was till now. Me neither. Now I want French toast. She sets the trays down in front of us and returns to the kitchen. I hope she gets back soon, because I'm about to be on that egg thing like mochi on wet food. <laughs> Mason returns, <laughs> cradling six empty coffee cups in her arms. Hayes follows in tow, carefully balancing a craft full of coffee. See, I did get lucky that I never had to be a waitress. I was a cashier, and I worked at a pizza place. I guess we did put the pizza down on the table, but, like, it wasn't the same as being, like, a waitress in a restaurant. I would have broken so many glasses. They set the cups and carafe on the table and take their seats. Hayes' butt barely hits the chair before the others start to dig in. I'm a little afraid I'll lose my hand if I try to jump in now, but I'm so hungry. Landry reaches out an arm from behind the fortress of French toast slices. He lightly bats at Reese's hand as it reaches for the syrup pitcher. Save some for Avery. Jeez, calm down. You're the one stealing all the food. I haven't taken any more than usual. Breakfast is important. While everybody shouts and chatters across the table, I help myself to a bit of everything. I'm not used to eating a real breakfast, especially one that didn't come out of a microwave, so I'm gonna savor this. Wow, this is amazing. Mason, what's this egg thing? Mason's eyebrow shoots up. She looks at me like I grew another nose. Frittata. Is that like a souffle? It looks like it'd be hard to make. Just eggs and vegetables in a pan. Still, I know I wouldn't be able to make anything like that. It's really nice to have a real breakfast. Yeah, I just have yogurt. <laughs> I did actually make eggs this morning because I was out of yogurt. What do you usually eat, Avery? Mostly cold pizza or toaster tarts, I guess, if I remember to get them. Mason glares like I just knocked her plate to the floor. She stares directly at me, through me, with a hard look in her eyes. You eat here now. Always. <laughs> ah, if only I had a Mason in my life. Uh, can I still have pizza sometimes? Not for breakfast. Ever. I can hear Finley and Reese snickering. Okay, but other times are still okay, right? Mason rolls her eyes and goes back to her coffee. Reese stares up at me between bites of French toast. Avery, when we're done, we need to talk about the dress code. Oh, Reese, don't start this again. Shh! It's an important part of new employee orientation. Landry passes a positively pained look at Reese. He glances at me, but a poke to the ribs from Finley sends him staring back at his plate. Landry, you're such a mama bird sometimes. Lighten up! Avery, look at this place. We take our visual presentation very seriously here. Mason gives another grunt. Hayes places his empty plate and cup on Mason's plate and takes the stack into the back with the urgency of a tactical retreat. Graves and I expect a certain level of decor with the wait staff. Is this about my outfit? I woke up a little late, so... No, this is about uniforms. Mason pushes her chair away from the table with enough force that it wobbles briefly on two legs. She stands and takes my plate in one fell swoop. Opening soon. Time to get ready. She picks up the empty cast iron skillet with one hand and balances a few other plates on top. That looks heavy, but she's holding it like it's nothing. Come on. She stares me down and gestures to the back door with a head nod before she heads into the kitchen. I just saw a key cat. <gasps> There's kitties. Hi, kitties. Hey, kitty. I caught one. Say hey, Alfie. You want to play a video game? No? Don't want to? Want to run around and be free? Mwah. Don't think you can run off so easily, Avery. You'll get written up if you don't have your uniform. Um... I'm gonna help out. Is Mason really the only chef here? That must take a lot of work. I bet she could use some help. 
Mostly I'm just grateful she gave me an out. Whatever Reese is planning, it doesn't sound like anyone but Finley cares for it. No, thank you. I think Mason and Hayes wanted my help, though. Hm. Fine, if Mason needs the help. But you're not off the hook for this yet. Reese. Come on, Landry, don't look at me like that. Something is definitely up. Whatever it is, I'm not gonna fall for it. Well, I'll be back once Mason says I'm done. I quickly retreat to the kitchen before Reese can delay me. Yeah, they're totally trying to, like, haze you. <laughs> Even though I work here now, I feel like I'm trespassing on hallowed ground. I always felt like that working at Target. It felt so weird going in the back rooms. I've never been in a restaurant kitchen before. Heck, I'm barely in my own kitchen. It smells amazing. Almost enough to make me hungry again. Hayes is at the sink, carefully scrubbing the iron skillet we used at breakfast. It looks like he's already got dishes on lockdown. Mason spares me a glance. She's already back to work, and it looks like there's a lot left to do. She dips a long spatula into a metal bowl and heaps a glob of frosting on top of a cake. Mom? You need help? Don't set the kitty free. Oh. Yeah, those two are hiding it. <laughs> you say hi, Batman? You say hi? You say hi. He's so cute. You want to play the video game? You play? Put the paw. Put the paw. Boop. Boop, boop. <sighs> there you go, kitty. Mm. Whew. Man, I would be so bad off if I worked in a place that made cakes all the time. Mm. I have no self-control with cake. All right. It's mesmerizing watching her move as she works to smooth the frosting. Can I help? Any experience with what, baking? Don't know why I asked. She doesn't bother looking up, but it feels like she doesn't have to see the cake to decorate it. I bet she could do this in her sleep. Don't touch anything. I guess I'll go then. Okay, I'll go uh, see if there's anything else I can do to help out. Seems like Hayes and Mason aren't really the talking type. If it weren't for the sound of the sink, it'd be dead silent back here. I guess I'm intruding. Oh well. I guess I should find where Landry ran off to. He's training me today, after all. I think he went upstairs. I head over to the foot of the staircase, but a cat has taken station in my path. Sleeping belly up, stretched out to the whole width of the step. Buddy, that's really cute, but that's a dangerous place to sleep. <laughs> it doesn't dignify me with a response. Instead, the fat orange cat shimmies in place to settle itself even more. Gently, I nudge to see if I can get the cat to move. Someone's gonna trip on you if you don't move. That's not gonna be fun for either of you. It opens one eye into a thin slit and then makes a murmuring noise and flicks its tail. The little tiger is not going anywhere, is it? Are all the cats here this spoiled? Guess I'll have to pick it up and move it myself. I lean over to scoop it up, but as I do, a tiny orange and white bobcat uh, tail whizzes past my feet. It stops on the step below the sleeping cat, raises one paw, and bats the other cat squarely on the forehead. The sleeping cat wakes up and hops to its feet. It looks angry. Am I gonna have to break up a cat fight? Hey, you two. The bobtail flattens its ears and stares intently at the orange cat. They both perk up when they hear a voice from above. Uh, is Hash Brown sleeping on the stairs again? The orange cat, Hash Brown's, I guess, trots away. Adorable! <sighs> Landry works his way down the stairs, eyes on the bobtail kitten. Was it really necessary to smack him? You should be nice! The bobtail turns its head away in a wide arc, almost as if it's giving an okay, whatever response. It lazily struts to the windowsill and takes up sentry. The cat's name is Hash Browns? <laughs> yeah, Graves names all the cats here. He comes up with some interesting ones. What's, what are some of their names? Hmm, well at the moment there's Ramona, Shinsuke, Kotick, Owl, Bramble Pelt, Now, Hisa, Valentine, Marina, Ain, Junta, Jam Band, and so on. Oh my god. Holy crap, which one was Bobtail? Oh, his face falls. Why does he look so nervous? That's, why don't you ask Reese later? Huh, is that his cat? Did he name it or something? Is it a bad name? Uh, no, he's, Graves should have told you about, huh. Let's get to work, it's time to open. Well, that's not weird. 
He isn't having any more of this. He slides past me to the front door, unlocks it, and flips the sign. Ta-da! Your first day has begun. And nobody's here. <laughs> Perfect job. You're paid to hang out with cats and do nothing. This is a little anticlimactic. <laughs> yeah, mornings are pretty slow. Might pick up later. It's the perfect job. It didn't. At all. All day. Perfect. Sure, a few people came in and Landry had me wait their tables while he supervised. It went pretty well and I made a couple bucks in tips, but that was it. Finley came down a couple times to check in and I saw Mason and Hayes every time I went into the kitchen, but I didn't see Reese at all. Reese's bobtailed cat, on the other hand, was all over the place. I think I see why he's taken a shine to this one. They're both complete hams. Not that I mind that it was slow. It just meant I got to play with the cats more. There are like 10 of them here, maybe. I can't get a solid count. They seem to vanish sometimes. Looks like there's a lot of areas around here for them to hide. Thanks for the help today, Avery. Landry, Finley, and I just finished wiping down the tables. Mason was gone before the cafe closed. I don't know where Hayes went. So, how'd you like it? Is it always this quiet? I mean, not that I'm complaining. Not always. Tomorrow should be busier for sure. I've got plans. Oh, we should get here early, huh? Don't say that like you aren't always early. Oh, I have to come in earlier? Don't worry about it too much, Avery. Just show up at your regular time. Okay, thanks. I can't imagine what busy means here. What, like six people in here at the same time? I've got a little more work I want to do on the blog, so you all go ahead. I'll close up if Graves doesn't get here to do it. Oh, thank you. Avery, you can head out. Thanks, are you leaving now? I could walk with you. Uh, I'll be out in a bit, you can go ahead. Oh, all right. See you all tomorrow. Night. The door closes behind me with a jingle. I have a job. My coworkers are pretty cute. I get to play with cats. And if this works out, I should be able to afford a place of my own soon. Oh, you sweet summer child. Oh, you sweet summer child. Wait until my parents hear about this. I'm feeling pretty good right now. I can't help giving a little celebratory fist pump. All right. I think I just heard someone snort a laugh behind me. I thought I said that pretty quietly. I turn around to see who it is, but there's nobody but a cat. Two cats, actually, from the cafe. Reese's cat and the Siamese, to be precise. Crap, how did they get outside? Did I let them out when I left? This is really bad. I'm pretty sure one of the first rules of working at a cat cafe is do not lose cats. They're not looking at me anymore, and now's my chance. I start creeping towards both cats. If I move too suddenly, I might spook them. I only make it a few steps before I see the bobtail's ears swivel back to face me. Without turning the rest of his head, it takes a springing leap and heads down one fork in the road. The Siamese continues down the same path, casual as anything. I can't get them both, but I need to at least get one of them. I better decide who to go after. Um, I feel like you should go after the anxious one. The scaredy kitty. Miss <laughs> Landry, bye. All the characters are. Uh, you can change your gender and date whoever, it doesn't matter. The bobtail's on to me, clearly, but the Siamese hasn't picked up on it yet. My best chance right now is probably following Siamese. It's gotten kind of far down the path. I better pick up my pace to catch up. I try to mimic those long strides Landry takes to cover more ground, but that doesn't work out so well. Jogging's gonna be easier. Or not. My feet are falling harder, and the cat notices. It's going faster, so I better pick up the pace. I break out in a full run to follow him. He definitely knows I'm there now, but it doesn't matter. I have bigger legs, so I'm gonna catch up. I'm a pretty good runner. Huh, that's not me. I finally close the gap. Suddenly the cat screeches to a halt and jerks around to face me. Uh, Avery, stop it! Huh? Why are you chasing me? Because you gotta- Wait, what am I saying? What are you saying? How are you saying? It's me. Me? Hayes? Last I checked, Hayes was a guy with glasses. You didn't seem like the pranking type, Hayes. The Hayes cat is puffing up like a dusting brush. I feel bad this cat's getting caught up in whatever shenanigans they're trying to put me through. This seems like it should be against work procedure. He's telling the truth, Avery. The voice comes from behind me. I whirl to see Landry, but he's not there. Down here. I readjust my gaze downward. Oh, come on. No, this, this isn't a joke, Avery. Landry Cat takes a few steps past me and sits down in front of Hayes Cat. Even as a Maine Coon, his gait is long. 
No. Come on. No. No, no. Graves didn't tell you? Tell me what? That you're all secret cats? That doesn't make any sense. I... This is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I'm sorry, Avery. I thought he told you. Is this why you were acting weird? You were keeping something this bonkers a secret? It's not easy to talk about. Whenever we leave the cafe, we turn into cats. I'm surprised to hear Hayes pipe up, of all people. Er, all cats. Cat people? It began around the time we started working here. Graves calls it a curse. A curse. A curse. This is too much. Though, I don't know if everyone thinks of it that way. But wait. Everyone? Is everybody at the cat a secret cafe? No, I said that backwards. <laughs> Is everybody at the cafe a secret cat? Uh, yeah? Graves, too? Nobody's seen him as a cat, but it seems safe to assume. Am I gonna turn into a cat? Landry isn't even looking at me anymore. He's avoiding eye contact as hard as he can. Hayes does the same. Neither answers. I'm gonna turn into a cat! <laughs> oh, come on! Sorry, Avery. Maybe you can stop it. We don't know what causes the curse. Maybe if you talk to the others tomorrow. Yeah, okay. Sure. Why not? Let's have a whole cat council. We can invite hash browns too. <laughs> hey, Baku. Yeah, so this story is about a cat cafe where there's been a magic curse. Everybody gets turned into cats. I don't remember the explanation, uh, but I know it's something magic. It's, you know, it, it's just a fun setup to have everybody be cats. <laughs> uh, is he also a person? I can see the fur between Hay's shoulders raising on end in a little ridge. Seeing that takes the wind out of my sails a little bit. <sighs> yeah, all right. I'm too tired for this. This better be a weird dream or something. A weird work-induced hallucination. Sorry, Avery. Not listening to talking cats anymore. Bye! Can you imagine your first day at work? <laughs> Everything goes great, and then suddenly all your coworkers are cats. <laughs> that would actually be awesome. I'd prefer my coworkers if they were cats. The sun's barely gone down, but I'm capital letter done with today. This is too much. Don't forget the good food this time. The can stuff. Huh? Did someone say something? There's nobody here but Mochi. Oh, for crap's sake. I find him standing next to the food bowl, looking up at me with those expectant eyes. I gently nudge him with my foot. Did you just say that? Meow. Nope. Nope, I'm done. I dump the rest of the canned food in the bowl and scurry out of the kitchen. Then I dump myself in bed. I don't even want to think about it right now. I'm just gonna sleep in a real bed for once. Maybe sleeping on the couch so much is messing with my head. I don't usually close the door, but I think it's a good idea tonight. I don't want Mochi whispering to me in my sleep. <laughs> Come here, kitty. Are you a secret person? <gasps> Alfred, you have to tell me if you're a secret person. Okay? Yeah. Are you a secret? Secret person? Do you turn into a person if you go to a cafe? Are you cursed? <laughs> Let me turn on the... Thank you. All right, now for our first real day. I wake up early enough, I surprise myself. This is gross. Who does this? <laughs> I do. I wake up at like seven every day. Yeah, it's on. At least I slept fairly well, all considered. My cheek hurts, kind of like I'm getting a powerful sit, just when I have a job where I see people all day. What well, perfect timing. I kick my legs free of the big blankets and roll off the side of the bed with my usual grace. Oh, this feels gross. I don't have any acne stuff here. Maybe Aunt Wendy has something I can put on it. I tumble over to the vanity to assess the damage. Uh, that's not a zit. That is a whisker. There is a whisker growing out of my face. Dun, dun, dun. The cat curse. Wouldn't be so bad, but to only be human at your job would suck. I'd rather be a cat at my job and human elsewhere. <laughs> it won't come out. 
I thought at first maybe it was mochis and got stuck, but nope, growing out of my face. I tried to pluck it. That was probably one of the worst ideas I've ever had. Now I know how sensitive cat whiskers are. Is this how the curse starts? I've been pacing around for too long. I gotta go to work, but how am I supposed to leave the house like this? What if someone sees me? I guess I could try to cover it with something. I dig around a bit and find some dust masks under the sink. Maybe that'll do the trick. I can pretend I have a cold or something. Or not, because trying to put it on feels really awkward against my face. I'm at a loss here. I'd call one of the staffers, but I didn't get their numbers yesterday. I guess it'd be hard to use a cell phone as a cat anyway. I'll just have to go to the cafe and hope there's someone to ask. I didn't run into anybody on the way to the cafe yesterday, but knowing my luck, there will be a whole crowd or something. I keep my head down and walk quickly. Jeez, my face itches. I hope another one isn't coming in. The thought is enough to make me pick up my pace. Running to work is going to be a theme for me. Maybe it'll keep me in shape. I just hope I keep my human shape. <laughs> Hi, baby. <gasps> Hello. Secret human. Are you actually Batman? Is that the secret? Are you secretly Batman for real? Mwah. Why are there so many people in front of the cafe today? This is what I was dreading. It's like they showed up specifically to look at the magical mutating cat person. As I approach the cafe, the whisker falls off like a dead leaf or something. Look at it just flutter to the floor. I lean down to pick it up. If I hadn't seen it happen, I would have thought it fell off one of the cats. This is stupid. This is so stupid. My eyes start to sting. I can't tell if I should be mad or crying or both. <laughs> no, I'm... Oh, boy. <laughs> Apparently, Jeff is Batman. Your your job has been stolen, buddy. What are you gonna do? You are such a little rag doll. Why do you let me do this to you? Why do you let me do this? This is just really stupid, and I don't want to deal with it. Man, your first job turned you into a cat? That is, that's a lot. I kick the door open with my foot, but it's actually pretty heavy, so it sort of just nudges open. Where the hell is Graves? Looks like most of them are already here. They're already setting the table for breakfast, like this is a regular normal day where nobody grows cat whiskers. Oh, Avery, I don't think he's in yet. What's the matter? This is the matter. This whole situation. He probably can't see the whisker I'm waving around, but I don't care. He knows. <laughs> he knows what I'm talking about. Oh, is that yours? What kind of cat are you? I'm not any kind of cat. I'm a people. <laughs> I can't believe this. <laughs> oh, come on, Avery. You should have known this was going to happen. How the hell was I supposed to know? Sounds like somebody here didn't read his contract. The safe areas and other tips are mentioned in the welcome pamphlet. What contract? You signed some paperwork when you started, right? Yeah. Well... How can you be so chill about this? We work for an evil dungeon lord who's turning us all into cats! I don't think they're called dungeon lords. Avery, none of us are happy about it either. We're doing what we can. There's gotta be more you could be doing. Where is Graves? He may be upstairs, but I don't know. I remember hearing Graves going up some creaky steps yesterday. Maybe that's his office or something. Whatever it is, there's rooms gonna be missing a door after I kick it off its hinges. I storm toward the back of the cafe. The steps must be back here somewhere. Fair. I wouldn't have read the instructions either. Or the, the you know, who reads the paperwork? Hayes and Mason are in the kitchen. Hayes is gawking, and even Mason's got an eye on me. Avery, where are you going? I've had enough of this. I gotta give him a piece of my mind. What? This curse crap! The others trail me to the kitchen. What am I, a cat herder? Avery, chill out. We aren't all mad about it. Most of us signed up for it on purpose. It's done some good things for some of us. Well, I'm mad about it. I'm mad as hell. Turning into a cat won't do jack for me. I know you're mad, but it's not Graves' fault. He does a lot to help us. We owe him. I don't owe him a damn thing. Seriously, Avery, shouting at our boss isn't going to change anything. There's nothing we can do about it right now. Seriously. Okay, but guys, but listen... <laughs> he did not say a thing about what was going to happen. Sure, it's in the paperwork. Who reads paperwork? He knew. Of course, I know why, but he knew exactly what was going to happen and didn't say anything. Of course you're going to be angry. Why aren't you? Let's just sit down and talk about it. 
There's a Superman cat? Really? I knew there was a dog. <laughs> and I know there is a Batman cow, which is great. And didn't they get a cat too? They got a, a cat? I don't remember exactly. They have so many new animals and things. <sighs> There's one thing I can do. Quit. Uh, yeah. I feel like it's just so... It wouldn't make any sense to not be angry about this. Like, this kid is planning her life. She's like, I'm gonna... I'm gonna move out. I'm gonna get a job. My parents are gonna be proud of me. Not, I'm gonna be a cat. <laughs> That's no. Yeah, well, there's one thing I can do. I can walk out of here right now. Yeah, what good's that gonna do? You're gonna fix this by yourself? Where are you even gonna go? Reese, don't antagonize him. You're gonna make it worse. I'm not putting up with this anymore. I'm out of here. I turn on my heels and storm towards the exit, pushing past everybody bottlenecked at the hallway. I make it back to the cafe and almost back out the door. Landry and Finley move quickly, though. Before I know it, they're standing in front of me. Please calm down, Avery. Don't get ahead of yourself. Listen to us. Um... Mm, should I storm out? Should I do it? Or should I say, all right, fine, I'll listen. But I'm pretty mad about it. Hmm. I don't remember what all the options do. I don't think there's an option that ends the game early. I mean, I should probably save, just in case. Oh, hey, all my saves. Um, I guess I'm just going to save over the first one. What do y'all think? Double down or stay? Do you guys have opinions? Do you have an opinion, Alfred? Do you have an opinion? Little baby. Little baby. Opinion. Your opinion is give me foods. Yes? Give foods? Yes? Yes. All right. <sighs> oh, your cat's name's Cody. That's so cute. Uh, let's see what I mean. Are you the person that tweeted that our cats look the same? Because I feel like they said their name, was, the cat was Cody. I guess I see what you mean. Come on, don't be such a salty caramel latte. <laughs> Finley puts her arm around my shoulder. I try shrinking away, but she redoubles her efforts. I've never had someone be so forceful about comforting me. Hmm. You like donuts, right? How about jelly donuts? What's that have to do with anything? I think it's time to show you the cat curse isn't all bad. She gives me a quick wink and a punch on the shoulder. Go sit down at the table. I'll be out and show you a sec. This is still so stupid. The frustration festers in the pit of my stomach, and now I don't even have anywhere to put it. I feel another hand slap me gently between the shoulder blades. What is with these people? This time it's Mason. Didn't eat yet, right? No, I've been freaking out all morning. How am I supposed to eat? She doesn't lift her hand. I feel it like a weight on my back. Stop sulking and sit down. Eat. Is that a comfort or a threat? Good food calms you down. She gives me a firm but gentle push toward the dining area. It's like being scooted forward by a steel pillar. I guess I might as well go sit down. I return to the front of the cafe and flop down in the chair at the head of the tables. After all that following everybody was doing before, nobody's bothered to come back out yet. Maybe they think I could use the space to cool off. Feels a little like I'm in timeout. First out of the kitchen is Hayes. He tips toes up and delicately sets a small teacup in front of me. Uh, it's chamomile and lavender tea. It can help with stress. I, I drink it sometimes when I'm overwhelmed. <gasps> kitty, I just saw you jump down off the kitchen counter. No, no. Bad kitty. Bad Batman. Hayes flinches a bit when I look up at him. I pick up the teacup and hold it to my face. It smells lovely. He looks at me with eyebrows upturned until I take a sip. When I oblige, I see what he means. It's pretty calming. I let out a deep sigh. I can feel my shoulders slump a bit. I did get into Irish tea for a little bit, but I just, coffee, just coffee. That's all I ever drink. Seems relieved to see I've approved. He takes it as permission to sit. You know, I, I get anxious a lot. You probably guessed that though, huh? Some things help me out, like the tea, but I think the thing that helps me most is being a cat. I know that must sound pretty stupid, but it's nice to have somewhere to go. I like that I can curl up in a corner and nothing is expected of me. It helps a lot. So that's, that really does sound stupid. That's what we mean when we aren't mad about it. No, I, I get what you're saying. I don't agree, but I get it. Thanks. Yeah, if he just said outright, 
Though I guess you wouldn't have believed him. But then maybe you would have thought, this guy's crazy, I shouldn't apply here. <laughs> he doesn't seem to know what to say. He's sort of staring down at the table and picking pieces off the paper napkin in front of him. Um, I'm gonna leave him be. That seems like a weird thing to ask. Okay, I get it for someone like him. Does that mean I should give him his space? He's definitely right about the tea for sure. Probably should have poured some for himself. Heck, he probably should have an IV of it. He seems on edge all the time. What about the others? Did they get something out of this? Esteemed patrons, may I have your attention, please? Especially you, Avery. Where's her voicing coming from? Down here, kiddo. Eh? I look down and... <gasps> your jelly donut! It's me, a real-life internet sensation. You're so surprised. You should see the look on your face right now. Wow, so you've really capitalized on this curse, huh? I just started making videos as a way to have fun with the situation. Who knew it would make me a celebrity? I'll give you my autograph later if you like. No, I'm fine. So yeah, the internet cat is, uh, <laughs> Finley. He's so cute. She's a calico. She gives my leg a playful pat and gives me a wink. You're so starstruck. I am not. You so are. I bet you spend a lot of time on the internet. I bet you know all about me. No. You're blushing. Why would I be blushing about a cat? Oh, cut the shtick, both of you. Reese saunters up, serving platter in hand. He nudges Finley aside with his foot, scooting her a good distance from the table. Rude. Are you over your temper tantrum, Avery? Seriously, boy. I almost was, but then you had to come in here and call it a temper tantrum. No sense of humor, just like I said. He reaches over my shoulder and sets a plate of pancakes down. Finley, go change back. I don't want your dirty feet on the table. God, I'm gonna sneak nip into your clothes next time you're a cat detail. Despite her threat, Finley saunters off, tail flickering into the break room. She returns a moment later and flops down in the seat across from me, but not before grabbing another stack of pancakes. She's already digging into her food when Mason comes out from the kitchen. Landry follows close behind with another tray of pancakes, and the rest of the table pounces on their breakfast prey. How are you feeling, Avery? Better, I guess. Glad to hear it. We didn't mean to spring this on you, but I think we all forgot how confusing it was at the start. I know I assumed you already knew what was happening. So I'm the only one who didn't read the contract? Did it say like, hey, I'm gonna turn you into a cat or something? Not in so many words, but of course we all read it, right? Wow, the various degrees of sheepishness going around this table right now. Nope. I didn't really understand this safe zones talk. I thought it was about safety protocol, I didn't ask. <laughs> Hayes shrugs and looks intently at the maple syrup pulled on his plate, which I'm going to interpret as no. I skimmed it? I got the potential for great power at a price part, but the specifics? Oh my god. Oh my god, all of you. No wonder I'm the one in charge here. Uh, the point is, Avery, we don't want you to feel like you're alone. We've tried finding out more about it, but we all hit dead ends. Yeah, you can't exactly wiki how to cure a cat curse. Well, you can, but the results are, well, they're from the internet. Why didn't you just ask him? Oh yeah, I did, but he said something like, ahem. We are but actors on the stage of life, and we have been cast in the drama of this cafe. That sounds like something he'd say. And you bought that? But everybody just sort of nods and agrees with Reese. Wow. Oh no! <laughs> oh! Let me fix this. Okay. All my screens just popped out because the cats ran past and I guess their feet, I don't, they pulled the HDMI a little bit and it came out of the TV. <laughs> Dorks. But we're all in this together. We're like teammates now and we can figure it out with or without graves. Yeah, yeah, you're right. We can do this. I raise my fork, pancake attached, and give a musketeer salute. I get varying nods and murmurs of agreement, but nobody follows my example. I thought we could have made this a thing. What we need to figure out first is crowd management. Jelly donut days are rough, and we need to be ready. I think I should spend time with Mason. Help her in the kitchen. Hayes, too. I'm okay with that. We might need you both to come out and help us from time to time. We can't spare anyone besides Finley for cat detail today. You know how these things go. No cat breaks. Sorry, Hayes. 
I know. Avery will be the main two covering the floor. Hayes and Reese will be out from time to time if we really get swamped, and Graves should be by later. It might be a bit hectic, so I hope you're ready. All right, mission accepted. Sounds exciting. I bet this place is fun when it's busy. That was the fun part about working at Target. Like, you hear the horror stories of working on Black Fridays, which I'm sure it sucks for lots of folks. Uh, my Black Friday was fantastic. So it was so busy and everybody lost track of where I was and none of my bosses were checking on me and I just got to stand in the corner and be like, hey, how are you guys doing? Uh, what's going on? I didn't do anything for 12 hours. <sighs> Some of the people who come by are so cute. Wait until you see the kids. This little girl had a jelly donut shirt she made herself. Aw, that's cute. I think you'd look cute in a jelly donut shirt too. Are you trying to get me to join your fan club or something? I don't have one, but if you want to manage it... Ah, uh, no, that's... Your loss! Mason, are you ready? This is gonna be a long day for you. I like a challenge. Finish eating so we can get back to work. Yes, ma'am. Reese shoves one last pancake in his mouth and without finishing chewing, grabs his plates and hurries after Mason. Hayes at least manages some grace in his exit. having a ugh, cough drop just because my voice is a little hoarse, but I wanted to at least get to some of the romance part yet. I don't remember. I think there's a part where you can kind of pick who you like, but I don't remember exactly. Better go get ready too. My public awaits. Finley hands me her plate, then dramatically flicks her hair away from her face. She disappears into the back. All right, Avery, drink your coffee. It's time to get energetic. Yeah! Good, because if you look outside the cafe and around the corner... Oh man, is that why there were so many people out front? Yup. I better chug this coffee then. Well, better get pumped. Oh, I think we had a Gandalf for a second. Oh boy, did it become busy fast. There's a crowd of people as soon as we open the door, all clamoring to see the internet sensation Jelly Donut. They pour in like a leak in a ship's hull. Landry tells me sometimes we have to cap the number of people allowed in, but it's not that bad yet. Hopefully the numbers stay down until Graves gets back. We'll need the crowd control in the afternoon. Where the heck is he anyway? I'm sure he has a lot to deal with. There's a lot more to managing a restaurant than what goes on inside, I'm sure. He always comes to help sooner or later. I'm having a lot of trouble picturing Graves waiting tables. Maybe he wears that uniform Reese is so obsessed with. Okay, so I don't have time to sit daydreaming in about that. There are tables to wait. I love that fat orange cat. Look at it. Boy, there are a lot of orders for donuts and coffee today. I didn't even know that was on the menu. I guess it's pretty on point to offer donuts on a day when jelly donuts in the cafe. Somehow I hadn't expected it. I don't see them in the pastry case. Maybe they're still in the back. I better go check. Hey, Mason, are there donuts back here? Oh, yeah, there are. A whole stack of them still warm. And they're cakey donuts. I shouldn't be hungry after such a big breakfast, but they look amazing. The coast is clear. I don't see anyone. I could just... Nah, man. I would never do that. Uh-uh. I wouldn't have the guts. Get it together. Don't steal inventory on a busy day. Like donuts, huh? Of course you do. Oh. I didn't even hear her come up behind me. <laughs> oh, and they're cute little cat donuts. That's adorable. I see more kitties walking around here. Is Bob still? Yep. We still have Bob back here. Gandalf's in the hallway. Mason looms over me with her arm across my shoulders. Oh, yeah. These look good. I'll make you some later. Uh, you don't have to do that. You're so busy. You don't have to do that. Turning down my generosity. No, I didn't mean... Relax, it's a joke. Oh. Sorry. What am I supposed to tell with her? She's so hard to read. Stop wasting time. It's busy out there. R right. Mason dumps the tray of plates in my hand and shoes me out of the kitchen. I bring the plates to their respective tables. I'm getting really good at this waitstaff stuff. Oh, thank goodness you're back, Avery. We're so swamped. Avery to the rescue. This is still a bit much. It's like we're under a waterfall of people who want to see Jelly Donut or something like that. I don't know, I'm too busy to think of a good metaphor. Finley's loving it though. Look at her, just mug for the camera. And there they go again. 
someone else trying to put donuts on her head. Excuse me, please read the rules. We can't let customers bring food to the cat play area. Fine, whatever. Jeez, you see something on the internet and think it's okay to do in real life? Some people. Someone better talk to that kid about the bad habits she's encouraging in people. The offending customer's already vanished back to his table, but now there are three people who've taken his place. We need more babysitters. One at a time, please. No flash photography. Thank goodness. Reese and Hayes are back out to corral the crowds. Reese has taken a spot at the door as the world's tiniest bouncer, and Hayes is taking orders. Which reminds me, I better get back to work. We're in the final stretch, but dang is this exhausting. My pockets are bursting with tips, but that's not much consolation if I feel like I'm never gonna leave this place. I could really use a break. Hey. Mm -hmm. What's she doing out here? Does she need a break too? I suppose I shouldn't be too selfish. I'm not the only one working my butt off here. Get in here. It's not a request so much as a command. I better go see what's up. Did some kind of baking bomb go off in here? We're all taking turns bussing tables and the crowd hasn't left much time to deal with dishes and cooking utensils. I need your help. And here I thought you didn't trust me in the kitchen. I don't, smartass. I need coffee. Yeah, me too. No, we're low on beans. Get them from the basement around the corner. I'm swamped. Oh, duh. Yeah, of course, just a sec, I'll get them. I've never been in the basement before. It's probably not a great idea to get someone to help me out, but... Dark spaces kind of creep me out. This is a restaurant, not a haunted house, and I'm not a scaredy cat. It should be fine. Here goes nothing. <laughs> of course his basement will look like this. Holy crap, Graves. I try to give you the benefit of the doubt, and this happens. This isn't a restaurant storehouse, it's a Halloween surplus store. Is that... it is. That's a curio full of model skeletons. What the hell? What's he got padlocked in that cabinet? Do I want to know? Yikes. I better get out of here and back upstairs quick before I get attacked by a giant toad. I find a bag of unground coffee beans. I'm sure I can barely lift myself, but more interesting is the book resting atop it. With its worn leather cover embossed with silver swirls in the shape of a cat, it looks like a spell book or something. Probably Graves' diary. I'm so curious. It wouldn't hurt to take a peek, right? What the heck? I don't get this at all. Is it written in code or something? This is all nonsense. Wait a second. Why is my name in here? Is Graves writing about me in his diary? Avery. Oh, she sounds mad. Now's not a good time to start reading. <laughs> Gandalf's behind the computer monitor. What are you doing? I see your ears. I see ears. Hello. What you doing? Hey, old man. What are you doing? <laughs> Being a grump. He doesn't like his food anymore now that he's tasted the kitten food. I'm having to order him special wet food so that he'll eat it because he has to have medicated food and he won't eat the medicated dry food anymore because he's had a taste of the kitten's wet food. <sighs> so. Ah, the book's real tiny and fits in my hoodie. I'm gonna look through this when I get home. Probably nothing, but after seeing my name in it, how can I resist taking it home for a better look? I'll bring it back before anyone notices it's gone. Okay, but seriously, I should leave before a crow lands in my hair or something. I heft the coffee bag in my arms and trundle up the stairs. Ah, the light of day. It was way too quiet in the basement. I barely get the door open when I hear muffled noise from the dining room and the clanging of pots and pans. Get lost. Took you long enough. Sorry, I don't know my way around down there yet. Creepy, isn't it? Yeah, I'm glad you said it. It gave me the chills. I like it. Somehow, I'm not surprised. Thanks. Now get back to work. Okay. Anytime. The whirring of coffee starts immediately after I start talking. The conversation's probably over. Better get out there and see what's going on. Looks like the crowd's dissipated. I also don't see Finley, or Jelly Donut, anywhere. I guess even her energy has limits, huh? Hey, cutie, how about some coffee? I had a real busy day at work. Oh, there she is. Wow, she looks worn out. I bet that does take a lot out of you. Wait, cutie? Dang, is she being friendly or making a move? Hmm. We'll just do one coffee coming up. I do like her a lot, but I think we're gonna go for Graves, because 
these giant goth nerds. You gotta, gotta do it. One coffee coming up. You want me to put anything in it? Oh, you sweetheart. Skim milk and two sugars, please. That's how I take mine. Got it. I fetch her a cup of coffee the way she likes it. Once I make it back, I catch her looking at her phone. The cafe got some good comments today. We should see a nice boost in traffic from this. Oh, so this is what you mean by social media expert or whatever. Yep. I run the coffee company message board and all those other accounts. Jelly Donut was something I started doing to get more cafe traffic. I didn't expect it to get so big. It's actually a lot of fun. You should join me when you start transforming too. I could use a sidekick. Oh, yeah. I'd forgotten about that until just now. Oh, sorry. I'm just trying to help. Here, come sit with me a sec. It's quiet enough that Landry can take care of the remaining stragglers, so it should be fine if we sit for a minute or two. Really, though, it's gonna be fine. We'll all stick together here, and you're part of the family now, got it? You have sprinkles in your hair. She reaches up and finds a treasure trove of sugar stuck in her bangs. <laughs> so I do. I mean it, though, got it? Yeah, thanks. Got any room for another at the table? Guess there weren't too many after all. I glance downstairs, and it looks like he's already locked the door. Always. Landry scoots a chair next to Finley. I guess the cafe is closed now. I expect you all won't spend too much time lollygagging. We have cleanup to do. Jeez, Dad. Lollygagging? Really? I don't know. It was the first word that came to mind. Reese, why don't you sit with us too? We could all use a break. I suppose so. Where are Hayes and Mason? Oh, you know Mason. She's probably already gone. She doesn't stick around after ships to help with cleanup. She gets here earlier than any of us for prep, so it's only fair she leaves early. Besides, I think she has something she does after work. What, as a cat? Hey, don't judge. I wonder what kind of cat she is anyway. It feels kind of rude to think that, but you know what they say about curiosity in cats. I should see if she's here to thank her for her work. I'll be right back. Tell Hayes to come join us if you see him. You got it. So we got what? We got Siamese as Hayes. He's a Maine Coon. Uh, he's a little bobtail. She's a calico, and we haven't seen... So Mason's the only one we haven't seen, huh? I don't remember what cat she is. Wow, kitchen's pretty clean already. Was Mason that quick? Oh, there she is. I caught her before she could go. Mason! What? Oh, um, you really busted your butt today. Thank you. It's my job. She's already got one foot out the door. She seems irritated I interrupted her. Have a good night. And with that, she's gone. Boy, she's hard to talk to. She disappears around the corner, but the second later, I catch a glimpse of a lanky orange cat with a crooked tail. Maybe that's her. That's funny. Orange cats tend to be male. Hmm. Looks like she's headed in the same direction as my apartment. I wonder if we're neighbors. Probably not. That's kind of silly to assume. When I get back to the kitchen, I hear the sink running. Looks like Hayes is doing the rest of the dishes. Why doesn't he come out with the others? Poor boy deserves a break as much as the rest of us. If everybody's a family, like Finley said, he should be part of it. Uh, let's invite him. Hey, put those down. Come out. We're gonna sit and have coffee together. I'm fine, thank you. What? You don't like me now? What? what? I'm just teasing you. Come on. You're one of us, and I'm sure you're tired, too. I'll come back and help with the dishes after we're done. I'm sure I won't be the only one, either. We gotta stick together, right? I guess so. Come on, I'll get your coffee, even. I'd rather get it myself. I'm a little picky with coffee. Oh yeah? How so? I prefer a good cappuccino instead. We have a nice espresso machine here. Oh, like the one you made for my interview. That was really good. Oh, thank you. Cappuccino is steamed milk and espresso. It's a delicate balance. Can you make me another one? Sure. Oh, is that a smile? It is. I'll go make them now. Meet you in the dining room. I head out to the cafe. Hayes walks with me at first, but slips upstairs as soon as we reach the staircase. There are a series of loud whirring noises, and he returns with a cup in each hand. He's careful as he hands me mine. It's still a little hot. Looks amazing, thank you. I head back upstairs, coffee in hand, and return to my seat. Hayes follows shortly after and sits at the table next to us. I reach out and drag his table a little closer to ours. Hey, we have a Bobbert! Come on, Bob. You're definitely anxious, Hayes, cat, Bob. Definitely. All right, there you go, buddy. We all sit and talk over coffee for a while. We divide the tips. Ow! 
careful to leave a separate stack for Mason. Ouchies. It's getting pretty dark. I should get going soon. I say goodbye to everybody and head out. I can understand that. They'd want to remain human for as long as possible. I'm going to enjoy this while I can. The gravity of the situation weighs on me as soon as I'm out the door. That would suck. I'd bring my Switch to work and be like, nah, I live here now. Uh, get a TV. I am crashing on your couch. What am I going to do when I start turning into a cat? How should I explain it? Nobody will believe me. Meow. And the thought flies out of my head. The black cat with the odd eyes is back. It sits in the middle of the road. Something dangles from its mouth, but I can't tell what. Quit it, Graves. I know that's you. Hm. The black cat stares at me impassively. Playing dumb isn't gonna work. The black cat flops onto the pavement and splays out its legs. It's not even looking at me. Maybe I'm off on this hot tip after all. Uh, I guess sometimes a cat is just a cat. Everything's getting to me. All the more reason to go home and get some sleep. I'm almost home now. I should figure out what I'm gonna do for din- <gasps> Ah! Something just hit my back. Get it off, get it off! Wait, it's gone? I see the black cat at my feet. What the hell? Damn it, Graves! I don't care if this cat is Graves or not. I'm calling it that until I'm proven wrong. Meow. The black cat trots off somewhere. Is it just me, or did that sound like someone saying the word meow? Worse than that, it sounded kind of smug. Graves. <laughs> Maybe it's not him. Maybe I just smell like cat and attract cats now. I better get home before I'm jumped by more strays. I run the rest of the way home and slam the door behind me. I can't take this. If my hair wasn't already white, it'd be turning that way. You're late. Huh? Who said that? I look down. Mochi's fat face is looking up at me. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not doing this. I dump some kibble in Mochi's bowl, go to my room, and close the door behind me. I shamble into my pajamas, but when I bundle up my hoodie, I feel a firm, squarish bulge in the pocket. That's right, the book! Maybe something useful's in here. I start to flip through the book again. There's my name. And there's Hayes. Finley, Mason, Landry, and Reese. It might be a clue of some time, but I, kind, but I don't know what it's supposed to say. All these words look like they've been written by birds hopping in ink. I toss my hoodie on the floor and get to work. Maybe I can decipher it. If I hold the book upside down. No. Is there a cipher? Nope. I don't know why I bothered looking. Of course it won't be that easy. I try for another 20 minutes or so, but it's useless. <sighs> I give up. What's up? Oh. Frustrated, I drop the book. It hits my hoodie and ungracefully tumbles over. I shuffle it away with my foot and something tumbles out. What is that? Looks like it fell out of the hood. A bookmark? Did I leave that there? Why would I put anything there? I pick it up. It looks like it's got some weird holographic center. Kind of pretty. I should bring it back to the cafe tomorrow, along with the stupid book. I go to tuck the bookmark into it for safekeeping, but... <gasps> Hold up. I can read it with this. I don't know how it got there, but it's the key to reading this book. The Hallowed Covenant of Witchery. What? Reese did say something about witches the other day. This might be a good lead to whatever's going on. I settle in with the book and start from the beginning. I've been doing this for days now. I wake up, go to work, come home, lose myself in the grimoire, and barely make it to bed right before the sun comes up. Lather, rinse, repeat. Listen to me. I'm calling the thing a grimoire now. I can't stop reading this damn book. Or mumbling to myself, I guess. But seriously, there's all this stuff about witches, covens, powers. I've never seen anything like it. Sometimes I don't even understand the words on the page, and they make me feel strange when I read. Powerful, I guess. Like if I keep going, they'll suddenly click into place and I'll learn something unknowable. It's getting to me, though. I feel haggard, and my co-workers have pointed out I'm getting some wicked bags under my eyes. I haven't told them about the book. I bet they think I've been up playing video games or something. Meh. What's with you? You're so friendly lately. Since when do you sit in laps? They do say some witches get familiars. No, that's ridiculous. I'm getting ahead of myself here. I'm not becoming a witch. I have been trying some of the stuff in the book out, though. Just a bit. You can't blame me for that. 
Hear me out, but I think I managed to move a cola can with magic. Maybe it was balanced weirdly or something and fell on its own, but it felt like it worked. I've definitely been reading this gibberish book for too long. I should stretch my legs or something, right, Mochi? Meh. See, even Mochi agrees, and he hates exercise. Hang on, are they all familiars? I honestly don't remember. I do know that, like, magic and witch covens was involved, but I don't remember, like, the why of the story. I don't know. It's actually pretty early. Reading a dusty tome all night actually reset my sleep schedule to a normal one. I'm gonna celebrate with coffee, breakfast, and a nice walk. When did I become a coffee drinker anyway? It's not bad at all now that I've gotten used to it. The stuff I drink is actually a real shan shade of tan now. My palate is refining every day. I kind of just want a big old cheese Danish or something too. There's the corner store down the road. I've been in there for a lot of stuff and their breakfast pastries look good. I could just stop by the cafe. It's closed to customers today, but I bet someone's hanging around. Let's go to the corner store. You know what? I eat at the cafe all the time now. Why not get some variety? place is really cute and handy. I'm not really a grocery shopping kind of person, but if I was, I'd do it here. Oh, baby. The snacks are choice, and the little bakery window behind the counter has some surprisingly delicious donuts. I think the owner makes them himself. The owner's a, a gruff guy, but I bet he's the type that gets favorite customers and warms up to them. All I know is I'm not one of those favorites yet. He's at the counter reading the paper right now. He somehow manages to spare me a glance as I approach, but goes back to the sports section while I pour myself a cup of coffee. Good morning. Hmm. It sure is starting to get cold out, isn't it? You want donuts or what? <laughs> Boy, he reminds me of a certain surly chef. Yeah, a uh, chocolate and a jelly donut, please. <laughs> jelly donut. He turns to pluck the donuts from the display case, and that's when I see it. Her, to be precise. The scraggly orange cat curled up and sleeping on top of an overturned milk crate down by the owner's feet. That's... Mason? The old man didn't hear me, but the cat sure did. Her eyes fly wide open and her pupils shrink to the size of a paper cut. I start to mouth, what are you doing here? But she's having none of this. Her crooked tail puffs to twice its size and thrashes wildly about her. Even as a cat, she's intimidating. I know it's her, and I know if I don't shut up, she's gonna come at me. Here's your donuts. What'd you do to my cat? Uh, nothing. I think she just doesn't like the way I look or something. Anyway, bye! I leave the money on the counter and make a hasty retreat. <laughs> Your cat's in this? Aww. Junta? <laughs> Aww. How weird. I didn't expect Mason, of all people, to be some store mascot. Something weird's going on here. That's adorable. I figured it was a Kickstarter bonus. That's adorable. I hope it's not so weird I can't go there anymore. This donut's delicious. I decide to head over to the cafe for a bit. I hope they won't get on my case about having outside food. Kind of think they won't care, though. Uh, Mason's probably the only one who would give me grief about that, and well, when I get there, I already see some movement inside. Normally, I'd be weirded out by people hanging out at work on their day off, but cat curse and all. I get it. Uh, you'll have to tell us which one, uh, Jinta is. If it's in the background, it'd be cute. Hayes opens the door for me. It looks like he's the only one here right now, actually. I see him glance down at the coffee in my hand. Where'd you get the coffee? Uh, the corner store a few blocks away. It's on my way here. You could have come here. He looks a little disdainful. Like, hmm. I like, I kind of like knowing such a shy guy has a snobby side, though. There's something hiding in that shell for sure. I sink into my favorite spot on the big circle couch and take a big old sip of coffee. I could sit here all day. Maybe I will. Oh, Avery, you're here early. Yeah, I thought I'd come see what everybody's doing. I've been cooped up in my house too long. Good to see you. I'll be around doing some handiwork, but let me know if you need anything. Don't worry about me. Sounds like you'll be busy enough. There's the door again. Hello, hello! So, Avery, what breed are you? Do you know yet? Uh, excuse me? Cat, I mean. Sorry, is it still a sensitive subject? No, nothing's happened to me since the day I grew the whisker. I figured it'd take more time. That's strange. I turned in about a week. Yeah, me too. Hayes nods from the other couch. This wouldn't be the first time Avery's slow on the uptake. Were you just standing there waiting for a chance to say something like that? Of course not. 
He totally was. <laughs> Little shit. That's right, though. Playing with the book made me forget about the curse. Why haven't I seen any changes since then? Well, I'm gonna do laundry. Let me know whenever you find out. Betting you're a silver tabby or something like that. I hope the kind of cat I become is still a person. <laughs> I love it. Reese rolls his eyes and flops down on the long row of seats at the side of the cafe. He settles in with a spiral-bound sketchbook. Finley picks up a large bag and trundles toward the stairs. Is there a laundry machine up there? Yeah, in Graves' apartment. He lets us do laundry for free. Wait. Graves lives here? Yeah, duh. The third floor is his apartment. Shouldn't we see him, like, all the time? He's basically a ghost as is. He's usually out really late at night and leaves pretty early in the morning. I don't think he sleeps. I bet he sleeps in a fancy coffin. <laughs> I just mean he's really busy. He takes care of all the administrative stuff for the cafe, after all. Hmm. This game's really fun. I hope you enjoy it. I like the customs and appearance. Yeah, that is really, really cool. And I've actually, I've played this game to death. <laughs> I picked it for Valentine's Day because folks were joking about doing a romance game. I thought about doing da Daddy, Dream Daddy, but figured people haven't heard of this one and it's super good and super cute. It is probably my favorite visual novel that I've played. I've only played like 10, but... Well, I better get to work. That ramp isn't going to build itself after all. Landry gives me a wave and disappears into the back. He's back a few minutes later with hands full of lumber and a roll of- Oh, he's building cat furniture. That's why all that stuff was in the basement. Sorry, might be a bit noisy in here. No problem with me. I suppose if you must. Landry and Reese go back to work. A few minutes later, I hear Finley. I peek up the balcony and she's fiddling with a laptop. Everybody seems to be keeping busy. Maybe I should help one of them. But on the other hand, I'm not getting paid for it, so... Uh, so I think... I think by choosing to hang out with people, you're kind of like, you know, this is the person that I'm into. And I honestly really want to go for graves. I love that goth weirdo. Uh, though I did, I think Finley was probably the first person that I picked. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay put. Mm. I'm gonna stay here and finish this delicious coffee before I do anything. This is my day off after all. We all get caught up doing our own thing when I hear footsteps approach from the kitchen. Why, if it isn't the big boss himself. That's the second, second Metal Gear <laughs> reference. My wonderful cat herders, I see you've been keeping the place well while I've been gone. He looks us over, but his gaze stops on me for just a second. He has a weird glimmer in his eye that I can't really place. Ugh. I'm on to you, buddy. I know you have something to do with that book. It can't have been there just because you're a collector or something. Heck, it has our names in it. I don't really understand those pages since the bookmark doesn't work on them, but still, it must be something fishy. Landry, excellent work on the cat's equipment, as always. Ah, uh, I'm not done yet. Have you ever given me reason to doubt? I know you'll do a stellar job. We can talk about future designs soon. Uh, sure thing, boss. Reese, I see you've been keeping your protege in line. Keep up the good work. Of course, nothing gets past me. The eyes and talon of an eagle. Protege? Are they talking about me? Haze, my sweet Haze, can I trouble you for some of your exquisite coffee? I'd be happy to. You are a treasure as always. I hope you've been keeping well. Uh, oh, well, Finley. Finley peeks her head over the back balcony to shout down. Come on, just come downstairs. Present. Your videos are keeping me busy. We hit a whole new attendance record the other day. And six adoptions in two days. The home inspections never end. I'm sorry you have such a precious, adorable girl here keeping your business work. You are my internet lifeline. I have no head for such things. I bet he's been lost ever since telegrams went out of style. And Avery. He's real close now. I don't think I like it. <laughs> he puts his hand on my shoulder and levels his gaze down to mine. That blue eye is so chilling. It really is a telltale heart situation. I'm on to you, Avery. Huh? You're the fastest learner we've had here yet. I forget you're still new. I feel like he's not just talking about the cafe work. Well, I've been doing a lot of studying. So you have. So you have. He lets go of my shoulder and turns away to the arrest of the employees. He definitely wasn't talking about the cafe. He definitely knows something about that book. 
I'd ask him more, but maybe it's not a good idea in front of everybody else. I'll chase him down later when he's leaving or something. I have to get more information. Where's Mason? Lola. Hush. Yes, Cat Boss is meant to be creepy. I love it. They make him seem like... Because you can't do his storyline the first time through. So he's just a creepy weirdo that you can't get to know. You have to play the game again. I think that's really fun. That uh, they kind of keep him at a distance. And this game does have a lot of replayability. Because basically, like, huge parts of it are different depending on who you hang out with. That's not always the case with visual novels. Sometimes it's very similar. She hasn't been showing up much on days off lately. Maybe she's found a comfy gig at an old cat lady's or something. Haven't been to your place in ages, though. Ah! When did you get here? You startled me! I am so sad that the bonus prince Mochi wasn't- Oh, were they gonna make Mochi something? That's sad that they missed that. Dang. Ugh. Take it, there are loads of endings. There's at least one for every character, I'm pretty sure. It's been a while since I've played, but I literally played all- I trophied this game, which I've not done for, like, anything else on Steam. <laughs> Mason, I'm so glad you're here. It wouldn't be the same if you didn't join us. As much as I adore your cooking today, I'd rather give you respite. Think I'm gonna cook on my day off? Ha. <laughs> Of course not. That is why I will take the pleasure of providing you, my dear employees, with dinner today. But first, an announcement. He slips back into the kitchen for a moment. When he returns, he's holding a garment bag. No. You haven't even let me make the announcement. I know what this is. Absolutely not. Hmm. For my more cooperative employees, then. With a surely practiced flourish, Graves unzips the garment bag and lets it fall to the floor. Oh no. 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 Is that somehow both plaid and checked flannel? I didn't know you could make a suit out of that type of material. There's sort of an appalled silence from everybody. Reese looks personally offended. Mason just straight up leaves. <laughs> no appreciation for your new uniforms. And to think I had it made in your size, Avery. Try it on, Avery! She's still shouting down from the balcony. I can't blame her. I wouldn't want to get any closer to that suit either. I'd rather wear a potato sack. And I went through such trouble to have it made. Check with us next time before you waste your time! Tis easier to beg forgiveness than ask permission, as they say. See? You knew we wouldn't agree! Well, I'll leave this here in case you all come to reason. Take some time to admire it. I'll be off on one last errand, but trust when I return, you'll all be treated to a wonderful meal. Until then, farewell. With that, he disappears into the kitchen. I'm going to follow him, just to see what happens when he leaves. I get to the kitchen in time to see him slip through the back door. I'm sure I'm going to see that black cat. I just know it. I peek out the door as he leaves. He gets further and further from the cafe, but I don't see him change. Not even when he gets past the point where I know he's off cafe grounds. Hmm. I guess the others already assumed he wasn't affected by the curse, but why? Does this prove he's the culprit? How else would he escape whatever it was that got everyone else? Although, to be fair, I can't use that as proof. After all, I escaped the curse, and I sure as heck didn't cause it. This seems like a good a time as any to see if I can find out more about what's going on. I peek back into the main cafe. Looks like everybody's back to whatever they were doing before. The newly arrived Mason has kicked up her feet on the couch and seems to be dozing. Finley did say we have free access to Graves' apartment after all. I could go look and see what he's hiding up there. I'm also kind of curious about what it looks like. Then again, if he was hiding something, wouldn't somebody have noticed? Maybe he keeps all his magic stuff in the creepy basement. I wonder which would be better to search. Hmm. Pretty sure I picked the apartment the first time. I don't think I picked the basement. Maybe I should check the basement. First, we should speak to Alfred and see what he thinks. What do you think, Alfie? Basement or apartment? Check the basement. You didn't check the basement, so you should check that one. Okay, I will do this. Worked the first time, right? I bet that's where all the nefarious stuff is kept anyway. Maybe Graves is a hapless idiot caught in someone else's plan. Maybe I'm supposed to think he's a witch, but it's actually someone else using him as cover. 
Wouldn't that be messed up if it's one of the other workers at the cafe? I can't see any of them as the mastermind type, but what do I know? I suppose I should prepare myself for some snooping. <laughs> My TV has cat feet. Gandalf's just sitting behind it. <laughs> Boy, this place gives me the chills. I mean it, it's like 10 degrees cooler down here. Now, if I were a witch, where would I hide my witchery and witching accessories? I take a brief, brief walk to the immediate left of the stairs, but there's nothing here but cafe and cat supplies. Maybe the bulk coffee is also ground up and used to make arcane sigils. Or maybe I'm reaching. The right of the stairs has the more interesting stuff. I kneel down to get a closer look at the curio filled with crystals when I hear something creaking above me. Crap. Is Graves gonna catch me? Nah, he left, I'm hearing things. I resume my hunt. Maybe these are magic crystals after all. Creak, creak, hello? Oh! It's just you, Avery. It's just you, Batman. My imagination was going crazy when I saw the open door. Man, you gotta remember to close the door behind you when you snoop. Always remember that, Batman. You have to close the door when you snoop. Oh my goodness, you're so cute. I love to Batman. What, did you think something would be down here? I've played too many horror games not to consider the possibilities. Like, too many of them start like this, you know? Yeah, I've watched those games. Like, you think everything is fine and then BOOM! You know, like, you go down the stairs and then you're stuck at the hell dimension! A hell dimension filled with party supplies and bags of flour. Oh, don't say that like you aren't skeeved out to be down here. Of course I am. There's a scene like this in one game, West Falls. You ever heard of it? Nah. We've got to work on your repertoire, you know. Anyway, there's this scene where the main guy, Sage, is in a creepy basement like this. And then... BAM! I feel hands on my shoulders. Even though I know it's Finley, I can't help but jump. Ah! She pushes me against the wall, or tries to, but we don't get that far. I'm just sort of leaning back. A shadow is all up in his face and you gotta shake it off. Okay, I get it, I get it. <laughs> Sorry. It was this big surprise. You'd have to play it, I guess. There's another game I should lend you sometime. Boy, she's close right now. Like, really close. Not that I mind. So, what are you looking for down here anyway? I wonder if we've already accidentally gotten on her track. I don't know how, I don't remember how it works in this game. If you're like locked in by character choice or what. She doesn't bother to let go. Instead, she puts her arm around my shoulder like we're going on a walk together. Nothing particularly, I just wanted to explore a bit. You know, last time I was down here, I think I saw a ghost. It was just lying on the floor behind the cat food. Uh, there it is right there. I feel a hard poke in my side. Ah, <laughs> sorry, you're so cute when you're surprised. Just you wait. I'm gonna get you back when you aren't expecting it. I bet you'll try, but I doubt you'll succeed. Wanna go back upstairs? Yeah, sure. I don't think we can go up the stairs arm in arm, though. You just don't have a brave enough heart. I mean it, we're gonna fall. Okay, okay. She lets go and puts her hands behind my back and gently pushes me forward. Now shoot! Okay, okay. I think she was keeping you out of the basement, but I don't know that that was a bad thing. I think she just like... I don't know. That was a bust, mostly. Kind of nice to talk to Finley, I guess. Felt good to be getting closer to everybody. Sort of like I finally have a social life, sort of. I guess I'm still hanging out with a bunch of cats one way or another. Back to the drawing table and the curse business, huh? I drift from person to person, helping everybody with what they're doing for a while, but eventually the urge takes over. I just want to play with cats. I just want to play with cats. I just want to play with cats. Sun Shun Shunsuke gets all excited when I burst out the bell toy. Guess I'd be excited too. Owl gets messed up on the catnip. Now is swatting at his own tail, but I think the tail might be winning. Valentine is rolling around, kicking at nothing in the air. Seems to be having plenty of fun without me. Marina chases the feather on a string all the way up to the platform. Wish I had that much energy. And then they start taking naps. And that seems... I'm being attacked right now. Will someone please exhume Avery from the pile in the corner? Huh? I jump up with a start. When did I fall asleep? I'm being attacked. Why am I being attacked? Good morning, sleepyhead. Why is there garland on my head? 
In fact, I seem to be covered in cat toys. What the heck? Well, we tried to wake you up with catnip. What is all this? Finley. Why? I just put a mouse there to see if he'd wake up. And then you didn't, so I put another. And another. And another. I put some really cute pictures out of it. <laughs> oh my god, don't put those on the blog. Why would I ever do that? I fling a catnip mouse at Finley as hard as I can. It ricochets off her head. <laughs> Ow! Hey! Okay, okay, they won't go on the blog. Good. Today. No. Finley, be nice. <laughs> All of you stop distracting from the matter at hand. Di dinner has arrived. I thought you were actually going to make dinner, not just order takeout. We usually order takeout on our off days. It's nice to get a change of pace and try some of the other restaurants around here. And there are fewer dishes to wash. The cuisine du jour is brought to us by the Thai restaurant downtown you all so enjoy. Avery, I believe you will be experiencing their splendor for the first time tonight. What did you get? You didn't ask me what I wanted from the menu. I did, actually. You mumbled something about pad thai, then rolled over on top of a bunch of cat toys. Well, I mean, that's what I would have wanted, so... <laughs> I don't think I've actually... No, I did have Thai once when I was younger. We That restaurant's gone now. We really don't have many options for it around here. We eat a lot of uh, Chinese, Japanese. There's a Korean place. I really don't think there's a lot of Thai. I look over to the tables, and it looks like they've pulled all together into one long row again. Takeout boxes pile up in the center. Bon appetit, my dear employees. And the pack descends on the takeout boxes. After some sorting, we're all settled with our respective food. Graves takes the seat at the head of the table. Well, he claims it in name, but he's hardly sitting at all. When he's not flitting between us offering drinks, he's standing behind his chair and telling a story in as grand a Graves gesture as you'd imagine. When I was in college, none of you would have recognized me. What, did you take a break from your goth phase? You go grunge for a while? I would never break style. No, in fact. If anything, I suppose you could say I was more goth then. I had long black hair and I wore elaborate makeup. If anything, that sounds more on brand than you are right now. Why stop? You can't imagine how much time that took from my day. I have a business to run now, after all. Dad showed me a photo once. The one of you with your bandmate? Who? The guy with the mohawk. I don't know how he got such a huge hawk. Ah, uh, yes. It was pure witchcraft, that hair. He's doing it on purpose, isn't he? With the witch jokes. Wait, wait. You were in a band? Are you really surprised by that, Landry? Come on. <coughs> Gandalf just fell. Oh my god. <sighs> I don't recall the stereotype, but yes, I was in fact in a band. I bet it was called like Masters of the Night or something. No, Avery, it was not. I'd thank you to give me more credit than that. Nah, it was more like Nightly Nightshade. Or Dark Carousel. No, no. Or Sorrows of Blood. Et tu, Hayes. You are all so cruel. You have to tell us the real name or they'll keep going. I refuse to further enable this slander. It was X Spider Coven with an X. Reese. Spider Coven? How do you spell spider with an X? Goth willpower? <laughs> You're kidding me? They had a song that was called something like Rose Baptism. I only remember the parts that weren't in French, but no, 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 no. <clears throat> it went something like, no, no, this is traitorous. My own pupil betrays me. Ahem. <clears throat> Trapped within my own mind, something, something in French. My will dissolves to blood, the soul's red rind. Life is but a march toward death. <laughs> right, Graves? <laughs> Graves isn't listening to us anymore. He's pacing around and mumbling in agony. How do you know all this, Reese? Graves and my dad went to college together. He went to their shows. He met your mother at one of them, if I recall. You have me to thank for your very existence, my boy. Ugh, don't put it like that. Everybody's laughing and having a good time. Even Graves is being a good sport. This is nice. I wonder how long they've been working together. They're all like a big family. Graves is a lot more charming than I thought. He knows how to work a crowd, at least. I'm starting to get it. I guess this is why nobody's all that mad at Graves, even though they're going through this weird nonsense. He's kind of like everybody's weird, benevolent uncle. 
We all chat over dinner and coffee, and before I know it, the sun's gone. How long have we been doing this? Shoot, I better get home and feed Mochi before he throws a fit. He gets real passive-aggressive when he's fed late. It is quite late. I'll take care of all the dishes and sundry, so please relax and prepare yourselves to face the day tomorrow. Yeah, I guess we'd all better get going, huh? Hmm. Later. Mason's already headed out the back. She barely even turns her head when she waves goodbye. All right, everybody, see you tomorrow. Wonder how far we are. I don't remember how long this game is. Boy, it got late. The street lights are on, but I sort of hate walking the back roads at night because they're kind of sparsely lit. I don't know why, but it feels like a bad idea tonight. Okay, yeah, it says we could probably beat the main story in three hours. I feel like we could power through this. I decide to take the other way home. It's a bit longer, but the store lights are brighter once I get through this alley. Besides, it's pretty nice out. There's a lot of rusty junk on the street. Did someone just dump their crappy old bike here? Rude. How long has that been here? Looks like it's been around for years, but I don't remember seeing a messed up bike like that yesterday. I should be more observant. Graves should complain about it to someone. It doesn't make the walk to the cafe look good to customers. I can't shake this creeping feeling crawling up my spine. This is a quiet neighborhood. I've never felt this something. Something feels different, off, eerie. I haven't been getting much sleep lately. I could be imagining it, I don't know. All I know is I wanna be home. There's one other person on the street. Doesn't look like he's going anywhere. What is he doing? This is a weird place to loiter. Is he lost? I should offer him directions as I get closer. He whips his head up and stares me down with an intense gravity, threatening to root me in place and allow the chill in my spine to sink in its claws. I sever eye contact and hurry on my way. Never mind, I shouldn't talk to him at all. Maybe I should have crossed the street to avoid this because I seem to have his attention now. Out of the corner of my eye when I pass, I see his head move to follow me. I walk faster. Okay, maybe I'm exaggerating, making things up, but I'm not about to stay and find out what his deal is. Yikes. I feel like he's still watching me, but I'm not going back to find out. I walk even faster. Yikes. Maybe I'm making a mountain out of a mole here, here but that was creepy. I'm gonna stick to the back streets after all. I better go take care of Mochi before he jumps through the window and attacks me for food. I head upstairs and the rest of the night is pretty quiet. No more weirdos on the street, just the four-legged weirdo that lives in my apartment. But it turns out if I'd stuck around, I would have seen the man continue on his way. I would have seen him take the back alley all the way to the cafe. I would have seen him stare in the window of the cafe for a long time, then up to the third floor. I would have seen him leave a rusty handprint on the shutters of the building across the street. I'm starting to remember some stuff about this. Graves pops in and out of the cafe like a stray cat over the next couple of weeks, never staying for long. I still don't know what he's doing when he's gone. The days come and go and we settle into a routine. Everybody shows up and does their thing. I'm getting better at my job and I'm getting better at some other stuff too. Hey Mochi, check it out. Mochi opens one eye and thumps his tail against the side of the couch. I'm almost totally sure he understands me now. Meow. When I talk to him, it's not like I'm talking to a sentient pillow anymore. He actually acknowledges what I say and responds. It's not that weird to talk to your pets anyway, right? Right, Batman? He's just settled in my lap. It's adorable. I mean, it's not like he's literally talking back. That would be weird. I set two cola cans next to each other, then take a step back. Are you watching? You better be watching. Meh. Okay, here we go. I concentrate and... The cola cans flutter apart into long ribbons like potato peels. They collapse on each other and form a jumbled mess of aluminum. There's some soft crunching while the ball of soda can... The ball of soda can wobbles around a bit. Shapes begin to emerge from the ball of aluminum ribbons. Arms, legs, ears. Then before you know it... Ta-da! A soda can sculpture of a cat. It's you! Mochi makes a little huffing noise and closes his eyes. I set the cat sculpture aside with all the others. What, you don't think it looks like you? You're the worst audience. I'm gonna show this to the guys at the cafe. They'll appreciate it. I think I feel comfortable enough with my, uh, magic, I guess I might as well call it, to bring it up to everybody. 
I can demonstrate it now, after all, so it's not like they have reason to not believe me. The real problem is figuring out how to bring it up. I'm gonna mull it over for a bit, but I suppose a day or two of planning won't hurt. I should get ready for work. I had a couple days off, but I've still been going in to hang out with everybody. Oh, no. Kitty, did you fall? Kitty! <laughs> I think Kitty fell. All right, Batman, I'm gonna have- Oh, no, you How did you do that? He- he went behind- I guess he ran behind the furniture. Hi, Alfred. Goodness, kitten. Ugh. <sighs> what can I say? I like everybody. Some more than others. Okay, one especially more than others, but whatever. But again, first things first. We'll worry about the cat situation, and then I'll worry about the cute co-worker situation. Oh, no, I feel like I've been locked into somebody already. Oh, that's all right. I grab my keys, smush my face into Mochi's to say goodbye, he hates it, and then head on my way. Meh. I haven't seen any trace of the creepy guy since I saw him a while back, so I've started trying the other route to and from work when I need a change of scenery. It's not a great change, to be honest. There's still a lot of rusty junk lining the road, and it feels like I see more every time I come this way. It's so deliberately placed, there's no way it's not on purpose. There's a stack of old car parts that almost looks like a tower if you look at it the right way. It's almost artful. Today, though, there is a different addition to the walkway. Graves? He's right there, very much human, standing over the rusty, decrepit bike. He's so lost in thought, I wonder if he notices I'm here. Graves? What's up? Oh. Oh, Avery. Just assessing the litter around the cafe. Yeah, looks like someone's been using the walkway as a trash dump. So they have. Do you think it's one of the shop owners around here? I know the culprit. The true matter is to properly deal with its disposal. That's not our job. If you know who it is, make him do it. Regretfully, I do not believe we can stop him. He looks so serious. I mean, I can't blame him. It's an eyesore and it's probably hurting business. What a jerk. Who is it? Nobody you know. Don't worry about it. Well, I guess if he's not gonna stop, we should start cleaning it up. I'll help carry some of it. I roll up my hoodie sleeves and reach out to grab the rusty bike hand. Graves' hand. His fingers coiled tightly around my wrist so quickly I didn't even see him move. Don't touch it. His eyes hold an intense, stern glow as, he stares, as his stare bores into me. For just a moment, I feel that chill claw up my spine again. Uh, okay. Sorry. Forgive me. It's too dangerous to do this without the correct procedure. You haven't learned enough yet. This is a lot more complicated than just picking up trash, huh? Please, don't worry about it. I can't help wondering if this is related to some other weird things I've seen around here, you know? I'd rather you just focus on the cafe and leave this to me. Please don't worry about it. You're so opaque, I seriously don't get you at all. I've been hearing that since before I could speak. I'm used to it by now. I wish you'd just tell me straight up what's going on. Consider it a management problem. How is the job treating you? You do enjoy it here, yes? Well, maybe if I had a boss that told the truth, it'd be easier. No need to be contentious. I'm doing the best I can. I truly am sorry for the mess, Avery. I'm not the one you should be apologizing to. Talk to the rest of the staff about that. Best case scenario, this will be dealt with soon and we can all forget about it. And if the best case doesn't happen, then we'll have a new bridge to cross. Well, you'd best head in. Wouldn't want to be late, after all. You gonna write me up or something if I am? I don't think I'd need to after Finley got through with you for making her open by herself. Shoot, you're right. Well, later. Till then. There isn't much time until we open, so I hurry off to the cafe. Avery's a witch. Yeah, so she's been reading that magic book she found in the basement and been learning how to do magic, trying to figure out the spell that's been cast on all of them. Avery, there you are. I was starting to get worried. Sorry, I got sidetracked on the way here. I ran into Graves. I guess talking to the boss counts as work. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Graves couldn't keep hold of a topic if it was stapled to his hand. We hurriedly get to work finishing pre-open setup. Though it doesn't really matter, because it's a slow morning. The first person to come through the door isn't even a customer. It's Graves. 
fancy meeting you here. You want some coffee? The usual? Hmm? Uh, not right now, thank you. Please pay me no mind. I'll be in and out today. Maintenance work. Finally, the sink in the kitchen's been backing up something fierce lately. Not that kind of maintenance, my friend. Security improvements. He blows through the building and disappears through the back door as quickly as he arrived. Reese watches him go and takes a few wavering steps toward the door before deciding against it. I guess even Reese can't outboss the boss. Security improvements, huh? What the heck is that supposed to mean? That was weird. Well, back to work, huh? Yeah. It's hard to focus when I can see Graves pacing back and forth in front of the big glass storefront. Luckily, it's a slow day, so I can excuse myself every so often to peek in on him. I think I just saw him bury something under a loose tile. At one point, I dip my head out to see what he's doing, and he's just standing there, staring at the wall, tracing a picture on it with his finger. I'm sure he's doing it to look busy. But then I catch a sight of something, like light reflecting off a piece of metal on the wall itself. It flashes for a moment, and then it's gone. Maybe I'm seeing things. Maybe he's doing something to the building. Something arcane, I guess. But even if he is, why? Why is he suddenly so concerned with security? Is he setting like a magic anti-theft alarm or something? Or is it something more sinister? I can't help but think of his weird behavior this morning and his focus on the rust. Something's coming. Something as serious as the cat curse. If he's gonna leave us in the dark, I've gotta do something. Time to finally talk to someone about magic, the book, the curse, everything. Hey, Finley. Yeah, I think I'm locked into Finley, <laughs> which is fine. She is super sweet. But I was trying... Let me see if there's like a, a... Probably a guide, and I probably just didn't pick the right, like, go hang out with someone, go hang out with somebody, uh, you know. What's up, Avery? After work, can I talk to you about something? It's really important. It'll only take a minute. Uh, oh, sure. Why does she seem surprised by that? Her cheeks look pink. I guess from surprise? I hope I didn't worry her. Sorry, didn't mean to startle you. It's something I've been thinking about for a while and... Why don't you just tell me now, sweetie? She places her hand on my shoulder and gives it a squeeze. What was I gonna say? I... Oh, oh yeah. It's about the curse. It'll take a while to explain, but I think I figured some of it out. Oh, wow. Okay, sure. The curse, of course. Poor girl's disappointed. <laughs> Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. I'll clean up and we can meet in the basement. Thanks a lot. Okay. Yeah, I didn't pick the right options, unfortunately. It's a lot of dialogue stuff. It's really... I think I did, because I picked, uh the shirt. I talked with her about the shirt. Yeah, and if you miss any checkpoints, you can't get on the route. Yeah. <laughs> so you'd have to really follow, if you want to be sure you get who you want, you'd have to follow a walkthrough, which is fine. All right, I don't want to be interrupted. It's important to see she hears it first. With all the jelly donut stuff, I think she deserves to know what's going on. Besides, I kind of feel more comfortable talking to her. I hope she doesn't get upset. I've never seen her lose her temper, but I don't think I could bear to have Finley mad at me. Did she seem a bit disappointed just now? Must be my imagination. Yeah, I'm imagining things. I better get back to work. The rest of the day feels like a week, but we get there eventually. I notice Finley sneaking peeks at me the whole time. Judging by the looks from everyone else, they notice too. That's my girlfriend. The creepy basement seems like the best place to do this without the others. Uh-oh. Cat alert, something's falling over. Who's doing something?
They were trying to break through the barrier and go upstairs. <laughs> meow meow. Hello meow meow. Hello meow meow. You can't go upstairs. No. You can't. I'm sorry. You have to hang out down here. Yeah. <laughs> I still really don't like this place. Chili on top of everything else. Avery? You down here? My heart jumps. Uh, oh, yeah. There she is, right in front of me, standing really close. I'm staring back into Finley's expectant gaze. This is a little daunting. Okay, so, uh... Okay, there's not a way to say this without it sounding weird, so... I've been studying magic. And listen, you can't get put off by this when you've accepted the curse as a basic thing. But I found a magic book down here, and I started reading it, and I've been learning a lot. I can show you. I can do... Finley, can you grab me a soda can and an empty one? Oh, yeah, sure. She slips back upstairs and a few minutes pass, and then a few more. Catch! Clunk. Or whatever word you'd use to describe the sound of an empty soda can when it's thrown down a flight of stairs. You were supposed to catch it. You've got to give me more of a reaction time. <laughs> I don't think it would have made a difference. Sorry that took a while. I couldn't find an empty can, so I took one and chugged it. I brought you one, too. <laughs> she hands me a full can of cold cola. Oh, thanks. I can do it with one, though. All right, here we go. I focus my attention on the can like I practiced. Never had a non-cat audience for my magic before. Maybe I should ask Finley to transform. The can wobbles. It pitches to the side and unpeels like an orange skin. Holy crap! Uh, I can't keep my focus. The can flops to the ground and scrapes the cement. You were doing that? Yeah, but I messed up. Gotta try again. Okay, I'll be quiet this time. I unfocus my eyes again and get back to work. Spikes, petals, twirls come out of the aluminum. I lean down to pick up the soda can rosette I've made. Ta-da! You're a wizard, Avery! <laughs> <laughs> I hand it to Finley. She considers it appreciatively, then clips the flower to her shirt. <laughs> I think the correct term is witch, according to the book. Sounds like witches are everywhere if you look hard enough. It was definitely one who cursed you guys. If witches are real, Graves is doing a real bad job throwing people off his trail. <laughs> she gestures to the standee looming behind her. A witch on a broomstick? Really, Graves? Does he think he's hiding in plain sight? So do you really think he's the one that put the curse on us? I did it first, but now I don't know. He could be a bystander. Either way, he isn't going to help us, so we have to do it ourselves. So are you going to teach me how to do that? I'll do my best. But we shouldn't do it here. Graves might catch us. I don't want to risk it if he's actually the one behind this. Ooh, your place or mine? I have the book at my place, so want to come over? Wow, you're so forward. Uh, no, that's not what I meant. I'm just teasing, you dummo. Can we order dinner? Yeah, I know this great place, Pizza Lloyd's. Have you tried it? You and pizza. You're such a stereotypical nerd. I'm not a nerd. Uh-huh. I'm not. Yep. Come on, let's go. She takes my hand and leads me upstairs. <laughs> we hold hands until we reach the property perimeter. All right, don't look. I step forward, keeping my eyes facing ahead the whole time. A while later, a calico cat sits next to me. She looks up like she's expecting something. It'll be a lot faster if you carry me, you know. My legs are kind of stumpy. Oh, you're right. <laughs> I hadn't actually, you know, held any of the coworker cats. Like, felt like a big invasion of privacy. Like, that's the kind of thing you do after you get to know someone. But hey, she asked. I scoop her in my arms. Feels weird. But it doesn't feel any different than holding another cat, to be honest. I feel like royalty right now. Onward, my foot soldier. Yes, Highness. This is adorable, this little calico. Once we arrive, I set Finley in my favorite spot on the couch. Welcome to my humble abode. This is... Well, okay, I'll be real. It isn't any messier than my place. Oh, thank goodness. I was worried about you judging me. You could use some more exciting decor. The flowers feel, well, not you at all. It's my aunt's. I'm house-sitting for a while. That's sweet of her to let you crash. Hope she won't mind a cat. No, I came here with one. You should meet him. Mochi, we have a visitor. Mochi keeps low and slow, ears back and tail waving. Ooh, he doesn't like this at all, does he? He waddles his way over to the couch and saunters directly in her face. Hi, buddy. 
Moshi sniffs her nose, then jumps in what I assume is the cat version of surprise. He backs off, tail thumping wildly, and stares through tiny pupils. I think he can tell you're not a real cat. Yeah, real cats can tell. They get used to it pretty quickly. I'll sit between them in case Mochi tries something stupid. If you want to take photos of me and Mochi, I'll put it on the blog tomorrow. What, really? Yeah, we'll make him famous. You really ready to be a superstar, Mochi? <laughs> ready to have your name up in memes? <laughs> You're never ready to be a meme, trust me. Come on, Mochi. You can get internet famous, and then I'll sell shirts with your face on them. I scoot off the couch and pull my phone out of my pocket. Finley leans closer to Mochi, who regards her with suspicion. Stay still and look at the camera, sweetheart. For me? Surprisingly, he does, though he isn't happy about it. I snap a couple shots of jelly donut leaning on grumpy old Mochi. The internet will be all about these. Great! Send them to me? I'll give you my number. Oh, sure. She recites her number. I save it to my phone and send the pictures. You don't have it with you, right? I don't know where you'd keep it. It's at the cafe today, but sometimes I do. It just kind of disappears, like all my other stuff. I don't get messages until I turn back. It's magically back in my pocket with all my notifications. Man, magic is weird. Speaking of, I think you've got some teaching to do. Oh yeah, let me order food and we can get started. Cats can eat pizza, right? I'm not a cat. I just play one on the internet. Yeah, yeah, okay, one sec. I order pizza. While we wait for it, Finley picks through my game collection. Ooh, I loved this one. I played it in high school. She nudges a jewel case off the TV stand. It clatters to the floor face down. Oops, I forgot I don't have opposable thumbs. <laughs> yeah, that was one of my favorites. It came out my freshman year and I've replayed it like once a year since. You should bring the system to the cafe sometime. We could have a tournament. Is there even a TV there? Graves has one. We could set it up there. Sounds fun. Does anybody else at the cafe play games? They're just foot soldiers. Mere fodder before we clash in battle. <laughs> Ruthless. We chat until the pizza arrives. You're gonna love this. I set one plate, one of the nice floral ones for Finley. I grab mine directly from the box. Bon appetit. Oh, do you have any hot sauce? There might be some. I root around in the fridge. There's a whole bunch of probably expired stuff, but Tabasco's still good at least. Here we go. Great, can you um put some of the pizza for me? Opposable thumbs, you know. You got it, tell me when to stop. I shake the bottle over the slice once, twice, then pause. That's enough, right? Come on, more than that. Okay, shake, 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 shake. Wow, still? Finley must have taste buds of steel. That's good, thanks. Watching a cat try to eat a pizza is, well, it's not pretty. I can tell she's trying, but the way she lunges for bites all hunched over the slice is not the most graceful thing I've ever seen. Oh my god, don't look. This is embarrassing. Sorry, sorry. I take my slice to the kitchen. Ugh, Mochi's eating in here. That's worse. At least Finley understands the concept of manners. The way Mochi mashes his face into the kibble is plain grotesque. I should make myself useful. I walk back to the living room and pick up the grimoire before I flop on the couch. So I'll go over the basics while we eat, then we can try some things out. It says here are the basic things every witch learns. Usually stuff with borders and turf, blah blah, haven't looked that much up. The real power of magic comes from a source that's unique to everybody. So we have to find out what moves you to magic if we want to get started. What was yours? It's kind of hard to explain. I'm not really sure I understand it, but I can sort of feel it in my gut, you know? I had all this stuff lying around, so I started to play with it, and here we are. So you based your magic on trash. Well, when you put it like that... No, I think it's cute. I think that's resourceful. Want me to show you how to do it? No, that's okay, thanks. I'll think of my own. We sit for a while and read the book together. Good night, idiot. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. <sighs> it's still up to me to move it along the page. Opposable thumbs. There's basic stuff we go over together. Things like protection spells, hexes, you know, witch stuff. Okay, let me try this one. It sounds basic. Finley places her paw on her ar on my arm. Her little nose scrunches in concentration. Just seconds later, I feel a fizzy sensation in my sinuses. Ugh, soda bubbles? Ugh. <laughs> That's the worst. Who would come up with that? Somebody who's real bad at coming up with revenge plots. We trade stupid tricks back and forth, giggles growing with each one until we're doubled over laughing. Mochi's huddled in his bed, paws over his ears, and his eyes squish shut. 
I see you trying to ignore us. He testily thumps his tail as Finley and I read and joke late into the night. Lighten up, buddy. <laughs> Grumpy kitty. There's a paw on my shoulder, gently batting at me. I feel little bean toes touch my face. I grumble, but the noise does nothing to deter the offender. Hmm, no, Mochi. I roll over to face the back of the couch and shut out the insistent pawing. The couch? I slept on the couch? Oh, yikes, I'm still in my clothes. That means... Avery, it's me. Oh, crap, did I leave you stranded? I was sleeping right there, kiddo. You were out like a light. Oh. Did we sleep like spooning or something? Does it count like this? I wrestled Mochi for the arm of the sofa. That's a comfy spot. Oh. Anyway, can I use your computer? I want to check my comments. Sure. How are you going to use it? Can you type like that? Watch me. I scoot the laptop toward her and hope I didn't leave the tabs open as something stupid. I guess not, because she doesn't react. You've got one of the new ones where the keys aren't raised up. That makes it so much harder to type. She pa tra paused the trackpad and slowly but surely opens the browser. It looks like she's scratching at it. You do this often? Yeah, I prefer to do it from work for obvious reasons, but I check my comments from home sometimes too. Graves gave me one of those chunky old keyboards. It makes it easier to type, you know? Does Graves, like, go to your house? Sometimes, he does for all of us. I gave him a key a while back so he can keep the place from falling apart. He stops by from time to time. Is that what he's doing during the day? Probably. He doesn't swing by when I'm home, at least. Maybe I should ask him to give you the key. I'd rather have you stop by. Of course, it would be more fun to have you over when we're both people. Whoa, I can feel my ears getting hot. I must be bright red by now. Oh, yeah. A cat just made innuendo at me. Her tail lazily flicks back and forth to go with the lazy smile. You're cute, you big nerd. <laughs> she goes back to checking her mail. I leave to get changed. When I come back, she's stock still, intently studying something on the screen. The fur between her shoulders is raised. Oh no, do we have haters? No, not haters. Huh? Yeah, fine, it's fine. You seem upset. Something happened? Just a troll. I was right, it's haters. Nothing to worry about. You get trolls? Anybody who's even mildly famous on the internet has to deal with idiots and creepers. This is a true fact. You post cat videos. What's there to troll about? You don't even know the half of it, you sweet child. Here, let me share some. A lot of these are too mean to read, but let's see. Here's a heated debate about politics. Here's one about how ugly calicos are, but insists certain women are uglier. All from a video where Jelly Donut balances three donuts. Oh, here's one on my nail art tutorials. Lol, I hate females try to man certain faces that try to look sexy, but it doesn't work at all. I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. Yikes. I don't let it get me down. Most of them aren't like that at all. They're usual. Her eyes narrow to paper cut slits. What? Nothing. That doesn't look like nothing. It's fine. She scrabbles furiously at the touchpad, but not fast enough to keep me from seeing. In the moment before she hits delete, I see, I'm coming to see you. What was that? Who is that? I don't know, some internet weirdo. It's fine, don't worry about it. Easier said than done. It's okay, Avery. Nobody ever does anything. They're full of hot air. Sexist, racist, homophobic, transphobic, hot air. I don't really feel comforted by that. Let's talk about something else, okay? We're gonna be late for work if we just sit here and debate trolls. She's right, it is getting late. What a scandal. We walk in together with me in your arms. I'm putting you down before we cross the threshold. You can't carry me as a human? You've got those scrawny little noodle arms, so I guess not. These are not noodle arms. Bet if you arm wrestled Mason, she'd rip your hand clean off. Okay, but is there anybody at the cafe she couldn't beat? Well, Landry maybe. Nah, I don't think he'd win. Let's get them to face off. We'll take bets. Ha! I like it! Adorable. These children. I kind of wish there was like a playthrough where you could play through everybody's routes, like friend or whatever, so that you could see everybody's. Uh, but that would just make the game a million times longer. After some scrambling, we head out to the cafe together. It's a nice crisp morning. We don't talk much on the way in case bystanders over here, but it's a comfortable silence. Yeah, you don't want to be the weirdo that carries your cat around and talks. Jelly Donut isn't making an appearance today. It should be an uneventful shift. So why is someone standing at the entrance waiting for us to open? He's skeeping me out. Is he the one I ran into the other night? The one that stared daggers through me? No, he's too short. Who is he and why does he make me feel so uncomfortable? 
I've still got that creepy comment on my mind. It must be coloring my perception. Probably nothing. Let's go around the back. Good idea. We sneak around the corner, but not without being chased by a cold stare. I set Finley down once he's out of sight. She steps over the threshold. I got a bad vibe from that guy. I hope he isn't coming in. Yeah, I know what you mean. Some people just exude creep from their pores. He's dripping it all over the place. That's gross, but yeah. <laughs> we sneak in through the kitchen. Mason watches us with an expression I've never seen before. Mm, on her, at least. Awful late, Finley. Yeah, sorry. You stayed with Avery. <laughs> How'd you know? Not hard to tell. <laughs> Don't tell anybody, okay? Why would I? That's my girl! Finley slaps Mason on the back and heads onto the floor. I nod to Mason awkwardly before I traipse after Finley. Mason nods back, and I swear she's holding back a grin or something. <laughs> hey. Yeah? You sure about going out there with that guy? What guy? The one hanging around outside? What if he's that internet weirdo? Let me take your shift. You can take it easy. Nice of you to offer, but I'll be fine. If I let some Commodore get me down, I might as well give up. There's always gonna be creepers. Anyway, how do we even know he is? Maybe you're jumping to conclusions. I'd rather you be safe, honestly. Look, if things get weird, I'll go upstairs, okay? I guess. Don't worry so much. She presses her finger on my nose. Boop. Come on, let's finish prep. I love her, she's adorable. <sighs> I can't help but sneak anxious looks out the window. I don't see the creeper anymore, so maybe it was a coincidence? He might have been some dumb kid loitering. Maybe the commotion scared him off. When we open, a few people pile in, but he's not among them. Finley doesn't seem to notice. I should calm down. I distract myself by playing with some cats for a while. It's good to see Ramona and Junta getting along. Aww. After about an hour or so, just enough time for us to get into the routine, I see him. The creeper, creeping about, creepy as possible, slinks in behind another customer. He sits at a table near the window, hood drawn up, studying the menu like there's going to be a quiz. Hey, Finley. I bump into her on her way back from the kitchen. That guy is here. I'll take care of his cable, so take a break, okay? You're such a peach, Avery. Thanks. She pauses like she's considering something, but shrugs it off and escapes upstairs. I better go see what this guy wants. Have you decided on your order? Mm, no. I'll give you a little more time. Y yeah. I return to my attention to the customers that are actually here to eat something. I check on him a few more times. Each time he mumbles something about time. Why don't you just call me when you're ready? I'm waiting for someone. Oh, sorry. Are they coming here? Sooner or later. Okay. Maybe he's just nervous. Maybe he's meeting someone for a date. Maybe this is a misunderstanding. Guess I'll go tell Finley. No, he's a creeper. He's a creep. He's a creep. I'm technically not leaving the floor unsupervised since Reese is down there. On cat detail, but down there regardless. He can keep an eye on things. Oh, Finley's sitting at her laptop with a cup of coffee, chatting with Hayes as he cleans the pastry counter. Hey, kiddo. Hey, I think the coast is clear if you want to come back. Sure, thanks for keeping an eye out. You're my knight in shining armor. She heads downstairs, coffee and laptop momentarily abandoned. Finley told me you're looking out for her. That's really nice of you. That's what I do. I'm a real toughie. I'll save you from weirdos if you ever need it. D do you think I'd get weirdos? <laughs> I guess I did more harm than good planting the notion in his head. Uh, no, it was a hypothetical. I'm sure you're fine. Okay. No, I mean it. You're too nice for that. And Finley isn't? No, that's... You know what I mean. <laughs> sorry, sorry. No, don't apologize. I... Someone's voice rises to an indignant shriek. It's coming from downstairs. Uh-oh. You think you're hot stuff, huh? Think you can manipulate men? Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. What? Did I stutter? I'm telling you to get your ugly face off Neko Neko. We know where you work, and if you keep using some cat to get famous, there's gonna be problems. I thunder down the stairs. A few cats hear the noise and dive into their hiding places. Everybody's staring. Finley's trapped between this guy and a wall. Is he reading off a cue card? 
What's going on? Is there a problem? Avery, I... This isn't your problem. I believe it is. Avery, it's okay. I don't have to, but I'm gonna. Look, dude, if you don't leave, you're gonna have problems. Oh, so now you're threatening me? You wanna fight right here in the middle of this cafe? This is what guys like me have to deal with? I show up to express my concern and she sicks her white knight on me? This is what women are really like? I don't wanna hear that from you. You started this. I started what? You're the one manipulating guys to get what you want and I'm gonna stop it. His voice raises with every retort. The longer we talk back, the more he digs in his heels. I have a feeling this will only get worse. You're going to have to leave. Because I have an opinion? You can't censor me like that. Ugh, what should I do? Maybe I can intimidate him. I stare him dead in the eyes and roll up my sleeves. What, I hit a nerve? The second you hit stuff you don't like, you get violent? Typical. If you keep threatening me, maybe I'll hit more than nerves. Is this gonna be a fight? Finley's clenching her fists hard enough, her fingers are turning pale. She's gonna deck this guy. Leave Avery out of this. Get out of here. I've never heard her so angry. Her voice is low, like an angry cat's growling. Wait until I write about how you threaten me. I'll make sure everyone sees it. A hand settles on his shoulder. Its fingers splay out and slowly, deliberately dig in. Get out. Oh, it's Mason. Thanks, goodness. Who the hell are you? Security. Get out. Or I make you. She gives him something I've never seen Mason give anyone. A smile. A twisted, crooked, malicious smile. Do it. Tell them about the hell beast at a cat's paw. Love to hear what they say. They can come see me too and tell me to my face. Got a special greeting for all of you. You're all horrible. Then get out. I'm going, I'm going! Get your hand off me! Mason nudges him and he rushes out the door as if chased. That's my girl! Love it! You two, kitchen. Finley is silent, biting her lip, eyes smoldering. I nod and march into the back. Hayes, Reese, cover the floor. Right. Poor baby. Mason stands between us like a referee. Finley refuses to look up from her phone. Her thumbs furiously fly across the screen as she types. So that really was him. Who knows, could have been that guy. Could have been one of the other creeps who harassed me. Hell, maybe they'll all come out now. Is being internet famous really worth getting treated like this? Maybe you shouldn't make videos anymore. Why shouldn't I? They should not have the right to judge me for what I do, so why should I stop? I'm just trying to help. I don't need help. I can handle myself, thank you very much. And what would you do if you were alone and that guy came up? You could have gotten hurt. I'm a grown-ass woman, Avery. I can handle myself, and I don't need anyone telling me what I should do. This is ridiculous. You're being stubborn. You're being condescending. Cut it out. Cool down. Finley, take a break upstairs. Yeah, fine. Avery, sit. Uh, okay. Finley storms upstairs to Graves' apartment. I can hear the door slam from the here. I sit on a stool in the kitchen and fiddle with my hands. Is Mason gonna lecture me? I don't need that. Mason doesn't say anything. She just goes back to work. This is almost worse than if she laid into me. Is this the silent treatment? I should get back to work. No, sit. Am I in time out? Hmm. She shoves a mug into my hands. It's tea. Just drink it. She scoops another mug off the table and disappears upstairs. I draw in slow breaths of the tea's flowery scent, but it doesn't settle the anxiety lurching in my gut. Okay, Avery, breathe and drink your tea. Calm down. But the look on Finley's face, the look on that creepy jerk's face, they keep popping up. A lot happened in so little time. How many times did I screw up during that flurry of panic? Mason returns empty-handed. She goes back to work. The rhythmic sound of the knife hitting the cutting board is soothing. Neither of us talk. When I start again, excuse me, it's more to myself than anything. I did the best I could. I just wanted to protect her. Is that your job? Oh, she answered. She and Finley are pretty close, so I guess it makes sense she's getting involved. Well, no. Big difference between protecting and acting like a parent. I don't get it. That's a start. I don't get that either. Look, just cool off, then go talk to her. Okay. Take this to table seven. She dumps a tray in my hands. Oh, so now I can go back to work. Break's over. <laughs> Aw. 
Oh, I got a kitten in my lap. A kitty. Hey, sweetie. Things have quieted down. Most of the customers who were here for the incident have left, but I still feel stairs crawling up my back. Hayes and I cover the floor until Landry gets in. Hayes frequently, timidly glances toward me, the door, sometimes both. He pulls Landry aside and whispers something, telling him about the confrontation, no doubt. After that, I notice Landry keeping a sharp vigilance toward the door, too. And then his vigilance starts to creep up onto me. Something on your mind? Avery, have you seen Finley since this went down? I hope she's okay. No, I haven't. I know Mason went to check on her, but... That's good. How are you? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Probably should have just punched the guy. I'm glad you didn't. If he comes back, you leave him to me or Mason. Your job right now is talking to Finley. Do you want me to go see if she wants to? Nah, I'll just go up. Thanks, though. Of course. Remember, none of us will let anything happen to you or Finley. We're all family. Thanks. I head upstairs. Uh, Finley? No answer. I don't even see her. I approach and- Oh, there she is. Huddled in a ball, fast asleep. The sun is setting. The rays fall directly on the couch across Finley's sleeping face. I reach out without thinking to brush her hair away. I hope she hasn't been too upset. Before I can make eye contact, one eye stares back at me. Hey. Hey. You fell asleep? Yeah, I had to rage nap it out. Sorry I talked to you like that. I didn't mean for it to come out that way. I'm just really worried. I now have two kittens in my lap. They sense that sad is happening, so they are comforting us with their presence. Isn't that right, baby? No, you're trying to look out for me. I'm just sick of being told what to do about what I like. I understand. I would, too. I didn't mean to do that. I just... What if that guy comes back? Or another one? Maybe you're right. Maybe I should get out of the public eye if this is what I get for it. I mean, if you think that'd be safer. Maybe I'm too stubborn. When I was a kid, I wasn't really good at anything. Grades weren't great. I sucked at sports. I didn't have a lot of friends. I tried for theater, but I always got the ensemble parts. Never a speaking role. I know it sounds silly, but Jelly Donut was an opportunity. I threw it out there, it got really popular, and that made me feel great. This is the first time I've found something that made me stand out. But I didn't think about... Not all attention's good attention, you know? Is this the one kind of attention I'm gonna get? No, I don't think so. Until now, everyone's been really happy to see Jelly Donut. They're happy to see Finley. The other day, a customer asked about your makeup videos. And even if it was, I know you're more than that. If I gave up, would they move on? If not me, would it be someone else? I don't de like dealing with this, but I don't want to give them what they want either. I'd rather keep doing what I want to do. If that's what you want, you won't be alone. You've got Mason and Landry and me. You're right, I do. I feel her arm touch mine. I can also feel my face heat up. I'll be your bodyguard. I'll chase off anybody that tries to give you trouble. And by be your bodyguard, I mean I'll be standing here and behind me will be the two enormous characters, Landry and Mason, and they will scare them away. But I will be here. <laughs> I will be present <laughs> at the scaring away. Really? She gives a gentle little laugh. Why does it make my heart skip? I'd get someone more intimidating for that. <laughs> You're probably right. I had something different in mind for you. Yeah? Yeah. Aww, it's just... She places her hand under my chin and I can't take I can't read this here. <laughs> I managed to get my senses together with enough time to close my eyes before our lips touch. Cute. It's quick, but after she pulls away, I can still feel it. I feel my pulse rushing. Well, I hope it is, or else she'd be dead. <laughs> Did that help? Am I helping? Oh my god. She laughs and turns away, tucking her hair behind her ear. Their tinged pink is unbelievably cute. She's as flustered as I am. Thank goodness. Yeah, it did. I also have a favor to ask. I have an idea. Can I come over again tonight? Uh, yeah, sure, okay. Although, won't you be a cat? I mean to study magic, dummy. I want to practice with the grimoire. Yeah, of course. This time, let's get a Hawaiian pizza. Can we please get something else? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> oh my god, this is adorable. I gotta see if I can get... <laughs> I got two kittens! Let me see if I can turn the... One baby, two baby. Hello. Hello, Alfie. Hello, Batman. 
You're so cute. You're so cute. <laughs> Landry's really apologetic he can't escort us. Mason's pretty worked up about it, too. She even stays late to see us off. I carry Finley, Jelly Donut, home. We move a little faster in case the guy decided to stick around. Pity Graves isn't around. He could have walked with us. Yeah, I haven't seen him in a while. I hope he's okay. I'm sure he's fine. You think he's lost or something? I don't know. While I was in his apartment, it looked messier than usual. There's dust on the shelves. He never leaves dust. You think maybe he ran off? If he did, he would have taken Dracula, but she's still here and seems, seems lonely. I mean, she's being fed, but he usually spends more time at home, that's all. Oh my god, his cat's name is Dracula. I guess so. Finley nestles inside my hoodie for privacy and warmth. I feel like I'm smuggling a pillow, but whatever. This is gonna sound corny, but I can feel your heartbeat right now. It's kind of nice. She curls up and rests her head against my chest. Don't get fresh. Oh my god, I'm not, you weirdo. It's comforting. We order Thai from that one place. Turns out watching a cat eat Pad Ki Mao isn't any more graceful than watching one eat pizza. Is that too spicy? Not for me, it isn't. They never make it spicy enough. Can I try? You like that kind of thing? Well, I don't know. I'm curious. Well, okay. I'll just try a noodle. Oh no. <laughs> Eating the pepper is a mistake. Oh no. It's pretty good. It's... Holy crap. My mouth is on fire. I chuck my water and it does nothing. There's gotta be something in the kitchen. Milk, soda, anything. Oh my god, is that too much for you? You baby. I feel like I tried to put out a campfire with my mouth. How can you deal? Are all your taste buds dead? Of course not. I built up a tolerance for the fine nuances of flavor. My body's too weak, no! I'm so grateful for my boring mild pad thai. All right, let's get cracking. You have that book handy? right here. Can I? She won't look me in the eye. Her tail twitches wildly. Oh no, is something wrong? You okay? <laughs> yeah. Uh, can I sit in your lap while we read? Oh, yeah, okay, sure. Easier for me to read that way, you know? <laughs> yeah. Sheepishly, Finley crawls in my lap. I feel her back leaning against my stomach. It's, well, I could think of a way this would be nicer, to be honest. <laughs> Mochi looks on in disdain and then disappears into his bed. Hey, buddy, you never even tried to sit on my lap. You can't get jealous now. Okay, you still have the page bookmarked where we left off, right? Sure do. So we study together. Feels like no time has passed, so why are my eyelids drooping? And then I look at the clock. Holy crap, it's like 3 a.m. We gotta work tomorrow. It's cool if you wanna sleep. I'll be up for a little longer. I have an idea. Oh, yeah? hard to articulate. I just have a gut feeling, and I don't want to tell you in case it doesn't work. Oh, the same thing happened to me. Oh, been staying up all night reading arcane tomes and weaving dark magics? Oh yeah, all part of the package. We'll move on to human sacrifices next. The yawn is too powerful to stop. Yeah, I'm crashing hard. I'll sleep in my room so you can stay up. Sounds good. Night, sweetie. Uh oh, you too. Night, cutie. Don't stay up too late, okay? <laughs> You're so cute. That woke me up. She called me sweetie before, but now it feels more personal, you know? Oh my god, Batman's falling asleep with his head just falling back. Oh my god. I like it. I swaddle myself in blankets and try to calm back down. I drift off quickly, lulled by a faint murmur from the living room. <laughs> cute. Ugh, morning already. I have no idea what time I actually fell asleep, but it definitely wasn't early enough. I could carry Finley in the bags under my eyes. It's real tempting to hit snooze as many times as I can afford before I risk running late, but that's not fair to my guest. I should see how she's doing. Ah! What happened? How is she not a cat right now? Finley, you're, you're... Um, what? Wake up! You're not a cat! Huh? She stares down at herself, and that seeps through the sleep in her brain. She shoots up off the couch and grabs my hands. I'm not a cat! I'm not a cat! You're not a cat! None of us are cats! We jump up and down and shriek with joy. From his bed, Mochi gives us a cranky stare. Meh. Well, one of us is still a cat. But what did you do? How'd you do it? I don't know. I didn't even know it happened. I spent a, a lot of time working with magic last night. I guess that's it. 
<gasps> oh, I figured out my magic and what I can do. What? Show me. It's kind of hard to show. Let's just say I know what to do if that guy comes back. I hope he doesn't, but I also want to see. I'll figure something out, but first, coffee. I got maybe an hour of sleep. You got it. Let's stop for breakfast before work. My treat. Ooh, so generous. Have you been to the corner store around here? They make really amazing donuts. They're almost better than Mason's. I've only been able to shop on the internet lately, for obvious reasons. This is exciting. I can go to real stores again. I can wear all my new outfits and other people will actually see them. Ha, <laughs> you're right. I want to take you shopping with me. We'll look so cute together. Uh, oh, yeah. This is adorable. As we walk to breakfast, Finley tells me about the type of clothes she recommends for me. I'm not too good at fashion, but I think if it's with Finley, I could be a, it could be a lot of fun. We pick up a box of donuts and eat them as we walk. Finley, come here for a second. Hmm? You got a little bit of donut glaze on the side of your mouth. Hmm? Why don't you help me? I don't get it. She slips her hands around my shoulders. Oh, now I do. Well, if you insist. I lean in. Wow. I'm not surprised you're fraternizing with your little white knight. I wouldn't be surprised if you pay all your followers with a little sugar. Huh? Finley and I drop our hands. I whip my head to the side. Yep, it's him. Your security isn't here to help this time. Did you ambush us? There's nobody around to interrupt, so we can talk nice and clearly now. I've never been in a fight before. Not a real one, at least. I don't count the time in fourth grade I gave a kid a nosebleed by whacking him with my jacket zipper. I punched a guy in the bus in the face one time. I guess this is as good a time as any as start. You take one step closer, scum lord, and I'm gonna... Avery. She puts her hand on my shoulder and takes a step forward. She wipes the icing from her mouth with her thumb and then cracks her knuckles. I've got this. Oh, she's gonna do the thing. Normally I wouldn't hurt a girl, but liars like you. Nope. She puts her hands in the air in a peculiar gesture. I feel power? Something around her. Blocked. A gust of wind catches us from behind, smacking full force into the stalker. He stops. His arms fall to his sides. He's frozen in place. His shoulders twitch, but he can't seem to move any more than that. Hashtag reported. A ripple of wind catches around us. For a moment, there's silence, but then there are sirens. The siren gets closer around the corner. It gets closer, closer, and I see the squad car stop right at the edge of the alley. A police officer walks toward us. We've received reports of trouble. Are you all right? This man has been harassing us. Please take him away. That true, buddy? The officer claps her hand firmly on the man's shoulder. I'm going to have to take you to the station. Come with me. Dumbly, he nods. The cop steers him toward the squad car. Then they're gone, suddenly as they appear. What just happened? Did Finley do all that? She stands rigid, staring in the direction of the car that's no longer there. Finley? She turns to me with a wild look in her eyes. They're almost glowing. That, my dear, is how I'll handle creeps. You did that? All that? Holy crap, all I can do is bend soda cans. I was really scared it wouldn't work, but it did. It worked and we're safe. How did you come up with that? I don't know, I was just thinking it over, like, I wish things like blocking and reporting actually worked in real life and it was like a light went off. So this is magic, I can do magic. I'm a wizard, Avery. You already used that line. I don't care, I love it. We should be careful. I mean, when has this ever happened? Internet creeps don't just get magic away by cops. But what if it happened a lot more often? Huh? Nothing, you sweet child. Don't worry about it. And give me some sugar. You want another donut? No, you dumbo. <laughs> Cute. Adorable. Good job, Finley, indeed. Don't we all wish we had that power in our lives? <sighs> I'm walking on the sun with the stars on my shoulders and the wind in my hair, or some other complicated metaphor. I don't know, I've been so happy lately, it's great. I mean, work is still work, and mochi is still mochi, but I got a real cute crush I can spend time with, and I'm starting to get to the bottom of this magic curse thing. I think we're coming up on the end. Oh, oh! Pick say nothing. What? How is that any different from don't say anything? These choices are so obtuse. This whole game is obtuse. No, you don't get it. There's nuance here. Akia is choosing between action and inaction, and 
I just want to see them smooch. I know I told you. I'm basically an expert on this route. This leads to the best kissing scene. But you gotta get that build, the slow burn. And this is the slowest burn. I live for that stuff. We didn't have a slow burn. It was a little slow, because you're so dense. Hey. As promised, Finley did bring in Blast Zone, and we're huddled around her laptop playing. I didn't think I'd like a romantic game about boys fighting, but this is really compelling. We've been playing bits and pieces on breaks and after work. Everyone else stays away because Finley's tried this stick on them before. Their loss, honestly. There's a lot of good romantic angst in this game. I've settled into one of the bean bags, and Finley's head is in my lap. There's also part of our new evening routine. It's late. Everyone else went home. I'd suggest we go back to one of our apartments to play, but there's no way Finley's gonna interrupt this scene. So when we beat this, should we do one of the other routes? No, Kata or bust. <laughs> wow, strong opinions. You don't understand. The story falls apart in all the other routes. It's terrible, it's a trash game. And you said you liked this game. It's complicated. I get it. If I wasn't playing this, I'd be playing some other trash game. What I should be doing is trying to figure out how to break the curse for everyone. It's tricky. I don't know how to introduce them all to magic. Finley offered to make a video, but that sounds like too much work. We should just get them all together after work someday and do it. It's been hard to get everyone in the same place lately. And then there's Graves. Where is he? You gotta pick before it times out. Right, right. I pick the suggested choice and we continue with the scene in the game. It's been graciously quiet since that thing with the internet rando. Graves did say something about security improvements a while back. Maybe he did something to keep people out, like a ward. Did he accidentally ward himself out too? Ooh, ooh, this is the good part. Stop zoning out. She slaps my shoulder and that train of thought dissipates. Hmm? Uh, sorry, I was thinking about work stuff and it's getting kind of late. Aw, oh, man, okay. Let's save it and do this tomorrow then, okay? Kata's confession requires your full attention. I await it with bated breath. But come on, let's go. You can't stay here all night either. All right, all right. It's way later than when I usually leave. Usually the sunset's still peeking through the city skyline, but tonight the moon's already high. Back home, the crickets would be chirping full force right now. They get super noisy this time of year. Car noises echoed from the main rows are close enough. Finley's apartment is in the same direction as mine, so we walk hand in hand to the halfway point. So there's this sequel to Blastom, but it's garbage, you know? They added new characters and totally played down Kata's backstory. Wait till we beat it, then I'll tell you. She's been talking about the game the whole way back. I'm glad I could share it with her, but wow, is there a lot of backstory to remember. And later we should talk videos. I want to introduce you in my vlogs. I think we could start doing cute little bits about where we go on dates in the city and stuff. That sounds fun, but are you sure? Like, about me? I don't have a lot of, like, on-screen charisma or anything. Oh, I think you have plenty of charisma. You saying I have bad taste? Well, no, that's not what I... She gives my hand a squeeze. Uh, what was I just saying? I'm just teasing. I lace my fingers between hers and pull her closer. Sadly, we're already at the crossroads where we have to part ways. I'd come over, but I have some editing to do, so... See you tomorrow? You know where to find me. Of course. Then the thrilling conclusion of our game. She gives me a quick kiss, then bounds off down the road to her apartment. Bye, sweetie! Bye! <laughs> so cute. <laughs> well, I better start picking out some vlog-worthy outfits, huh? I'm sure Finley will go shopping with me. I think about it the best of the way home. Oh my god, Batman has fallen asleep and his whole head is just... <laughs> As I round the corner, I feel a tense, creeping stiffness crawl up my back. My steps slow. My legs are suddenly heavy. This is familiar. Like the feeling I got the other day before I ran into that dude who kept staring at me. It's like someone's breathing down my neck or looming behind me, reading over my shoulder. Is someone following me? I whip around. Just the street. I walk faster. I feel it growing with every step toward my apartment. Dread hollows a burrow in my stomach. Why do I feel so anxious? I'm just going home. I don't even have far to go. Am I getting s Oh. Oh no. It's him. Did he find out where I live? Does he live here too? No, that's too much of a coincidence. My limbs freeze. I feel my heart shaking inside my ribcage. My head is swimming. Everything is wrong. I can't place why. Howdy. Uh, good evening. Good night. My voice feels small and foreign, like it's thrown by a ventriloquist. I try to beeline for the door, but he sidesteps and blocks my way. 
Now, now, why the hurry? Won't you answer a couple questions, kiddo? His deep, drawling voice is saccharine venom. He puts on a smile, but it's certainly not one that puts me at ease. Uh, do, do you need directions? You seem lost. I can't keep the tremor out of my voice. He notices. Well, ain't you smart? Right to the point. Why, yes, I am lost. But I ain't looking for a place. Oh, I found that. Looking for a guy. Think you can help? Um, I'm pretty new to the city. I probably can't. I reckon you can. Suppose I shouldn't mince words. You're a busy person. I'm already feeling guilty wasting your time. I'm trying to hunt down graves. You seen him? Is he a friend? He can't be. He feels... See, I've been looking all over for my old buddy, and it's like he don't exist. Ain't that a shame? Uh, yeah, I haven't seen him recently either. Anger flashes over his face like an eclipse, vanishing as quickly as it had come. Shh, too bad. We got so much to talk about. I suppose his apprentice will do. That'll send the message. Intent reaches my feet before it hits my ears. I'm running before I know it. I'm not dumb enough to stick around and find out what he means by send the message. I don't look behind to see if he's following. That would slow me down. I have to get to the cafe. I just have to run like I'm being chased, even if I'm not. Ping! I hear a sharp noise behind me like a metal bat hitting a home run. My foot gets stuck on what I don't know, but it hits the ground and stays there. The force knocks me over and twists my ankle in a way that shocks pain up my leg. I'm seeing stars and I want to crawl away, but I can't. I gotta speak to Graves about your manners. Didn't even excuse yourself. What a rude little kitten. I look down. My foot is covered in rust. Rust? His movement is molasses, like he's enjoying a stroll through the park. I crane my head over my shoulder to see him, but it's hard from this angle. If you'd been polite, we wouldn't need to fight. Didn't want to hurt you, kitten. I only need a couple answers. But if you want to duel, I ain't gonna complain. Promise you won't run away, yeah? I won't play dirty if you don't. I don't think I could break this rust without breaking my ankle off. It feels like it's already broken. Tears sting my eyes. I can barely use my magic to make trash sculptures. How am I supposed to use it to fight? I'm doomed. You haven't changed a bit, Noct. Still pushing around the weak to excuse your own malfeance. I've never been so happy to hear my boss's voice. Graves! Graves will know what to do. I know it. Ha ha ha! Here you come acting like you ain't got anything to do with it. Gonna get me all nostalgic, old man! From out of nowhere, Graves is already next to me. He kneels down and places a hand on my foot. What's he holding? Are you hurt? Don't move, this may burn a little. A sensation washes over my rusted foot like stepping in a puddle of battery acid. Well, maybe that's a bit extreme. It burns, but it doesn't hurt. Rust crumbles to dust and I'm free. I flex my ankle. It doesn't feel great, but I can at least put weight on it now. Graves stands between me and Noct. With a flourish only Graves could accomplish, he pulls a sword from his cane. What a perfect weapon for him. Noct shoves his hand in his pocket and rests on his metal bat like a cane. Just standing there, waiting. How are you now? Can you stand unassisted? Yeah, thanks. Who is that? If you'll recall the bike in the alley. I almost forgot. The one that was rusted over? The ones Graves told me not to touch? This is why? Meet the source of our collective woes. Ah, come on now. And after all we've been through together? Avery, I don't imagine this will end well. I have a favor to ask. Whatever you need, boss. He drops the cane sheath and takes my hand. His eyes are fierce, fire and ice staring into mine. I feel like I shouldn't blink. I give it to you, all of it. Take care of it for me, Avery. It, what, all of what? Everything, everything of mine. You'll understand. Now go as fast as you can. Go to the cafe. You'll be safe there. What was that about? I don't feel any different. Why are you dawdling? Go!
What should I do, guys? I don't know. What should I do? Um, I'm gonna Google it. I don't know if it's a big difference, but... I feel like I should run because... I don't know. But if I run, what if he gets hurt? I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna try helping him. No, I know magic too, and I'm not gonna let you fight this creep by yourself. Avery, you aren't ready for this. Just go. Ping. The bat. Oh no. The bat hits the ground. I don't have time to register what's happening before I'm face first on the asphalt. Graves kneels above me. His legs and right arm are coated in rust. Dang, I think I'm dead now. He's stuck. I told you to run! He swings the sword. If only I knew the spell that Graves used to dissolve the rust. Maybe I can muddle through. It's worked with everything else so far. I throw my hands around his leg. Avery, don't! Too easy. Always knew you'd get dropped because of your strays. What's wrong with my hands? Why are they rusty? It's spreading. No! Uh-oh. Did I just die? When did I save last? Holy crap! <laughs> oh my god! I should've run! Dang! <laughs> Game over! <laughs> Happy romance visual novel! You died! Yay! Oh my god. Okay, but now what? Oh my god! I haven't saved in so long! Oh no! <laughs> oh wait, it has autosaves. When was this? Let's see what that... Let's see when this loads. Oh good, okay! Woo! Ha! We're gonna run away! <laughs> oh man, that was gonna suck if that was gonna be the ending! <laughs> Don't you worry, kitten. I'll catch up. Ha! Nox's words haunt me as I run the best I can on my sore ankle. It hurts with every step, but I can't stop. Dang, that was sucked! I pull out my phone as I run. I mash the touch screen to get to Finley's number. Usually we just text because I hate talking on the phone. You are fine, Daniel. That was not your fault. That was my instinct to be like, well, I can't just leave him, right? But no, uh, apparently we need to listen to the boss man. All right, ring, ring, ring. Voicemail, crap. I try a few more times. I almost dial the pizza place by accident because my hands are shaky. Maybe they'd be able to help me. I can see the cafe in front of me when my ringtone blares to light. Crap, did Nox hear that? I should have been more quiet. I s answer the phone before it can ring anymore. Hello? What the hey, Avery? Everything all right? You lock yourself out or something? Because if you want to come over... No, no, this is bad. I got attacked. Oh my god, what? Some witch uh, attacked me. Attacked Graves. It's bad. Avery, oh my god, where are you? I'm heading to the cafe. I'll meet you there, hon. I'm coming. No, wait. She's already hung up. I just needed to reach out to someone and tell them what happened. I didn't think this through. What if Noct intercepts her? My gut fills with terror. After all, if he knows who I am, he knows who she is too. No, Finley's stronger than me. She knows how to handle creeps, right? I hobble into the cafe, lock the door behind me and collapse on the nearest sofa. I close my eyes for a moment, but then that sound, someone's furiously jiggling the handle. Holy crap, now that I've had a few minutes to let everything catch up, my ankle hurts like hell. I try to hobble to the door, but it flies open before I have the chance. I ready myself to fight a murderer armed with a bat, but it's... Finley throws her arms around me and buries my face in her chest. Knox didn't kill me, but she might if she keeps squeezing me this hard. Avery, Avery baby, what happened? Who hurt you? Just point me in the right direction and I will destroy. Nobody hurts my honey like that. What? Avery, what's the matter? She loosens her grip just enough so I can escape and breathe again. I'm okay. Hurt my ankle, but I'll be okay. We need to stay safe and think about what to do. He was a witch, Finley. A witch beat Graves. Oh my god, what do we do? Is Mama Finley gonna have to block him? Don't be reckless. It's too dangerous. The door flies open and our heads whip around toward it. Graves! What happened? Where is he? And suddenly, everyone is here. The curse must have broken for everyone at once. This should be good news, but... Oh, Reese, It's bad. He's still out there, I think. Still out there where? He lunges, but Mason intercedes. Stop. He's injured. What happened to him? You have to tell me what happened. 
Someone attacked us. I have no idea who he was, but he had a grudge against Graves. His name was Noct, I think? I don't know who that is. What happened then? The Noct guy, I think he beat Graves. Reese clutches at his chest. He looks like he might fall over and pass out. I reach out to ease him to the seat, but he swats me away. I knew it. I knew he was going to get in over his head. I knew another witch was on his tail, but he told me stay out of it. Damn it, I could have helped. Why didn't he let me help? Reese sinks into the couch and slams the armrest with his fist. Beating on furniture isn't going to do anything, but if it helps him feel better. He sinks his fingers into the cushion and looks hard at the floor. His eyes gloss over. He's holding back tears with everything he's got. I feel really bad. For all his blustering, Reese admired Graves a lot. I think he was the only one of us who really did. I guess now after Graves saved me like that, I kind of do too. Too little too late, I suppose. So, now what happens? What do we do? We avenge him. Of course. We kill Noct. Whoa, whoa. That's a bit extreme. All's fair in a duel. If that's what this guy wants, that's what he gets. When he comes for the cafe, I'll take it back from him. Comes for the cafe? Why would he do that? When a witch defeats another in a duel, they take the loser's property, but he'll have to beat me to get it. Is Graves really dead? I don't know if Nock's intent was to kill him. Damn it. Now Landry's the one who looks pissed. This is kind of scary. I've never seen him do anything but laugh and smile before, so it's almost as jarring as seeing Reese cry. Magic is a scourge. This always happens when you get too close. Reese's head snaps up. What do you know about magic? You haven't studied. Hayes readies himself with wide eyes, his mouth pursed like the conversation is a game of double dutch played with live wires. What is it? Uh, why does everybody keep talking about magic? Was Graves cursed too? He must have been, right? It all sounds so unreal still. Are you sure it's magic? Of course it is. How else would this be happening? But he was too strong to get cursed. That part was just us. But he wasn't too strong to not curse us. Does that matter now? He's gone. And this Noct is going to be here to take everything else too. He spits the name like it's profane. Reese launches himself from the chair and storms to the door. He puts his hand in his pocket like he's concealing a weapon. How would he just take the cafe? That's not how property works. They're like deeds and stuff. Not that I know that much about it, but I'm pretty sure my parents didn't kill a witch to buy their house. <laughs> of course it's more complicated. I don't exactly have time to explain which territories. Just know that when you're defeated in a duel, you give your property to the winner. So unless Graves gave it away before the fight, Noct owns the cafe now. I remember Graves grabbing my hand and staring through me. I remember his words. I think he did. What? Before he fought, before he told me to run away, he told me he gave everything to me. You? Why you? You're a newborn baby stumbling through the witching world. That's not fair, you can't handle it. I think he damn well can. Besides, it's not like Avery's alone, right? I mean, I'm here too. I can kick some rando witch's ass too. Since when can you use magic? Since Avery taught me. She sounds so proud when she says that. It makes me feel proud by extension. Guess I did some good. If Finley can learn, I can too. Jealous? Worried I can take you in a fight now? Huh. <laughs> Wouldn't need magic to beat the snot out of some creep. Let me show his face. Well, I don't know if I'm okay with fighting, but we can all stick together and keep Avery in the cafe safe, right guys? Yeah, I think a little self-defense could help us all. I know I feel a bit better. <laughs> if that's how you'll all be, then you can't expect me to straggle behind. Of course I'll show you all how magic's really done. First things first, we need a plan. Avery, do you know for sure Graves was defeated? Well, if the curse is broken, it's a safe assumption. You know what they say about assumptions. Reese, would it ease your mind a bit if I go with you to investigate? Sure. I could use some muscle to hold me back from eviscerating Noct. And Avery, we better take care of Mochi. What if Noct, like, takes him hostage or something? I bet he's the kind of scum who would do that. I'll get him. I'll bring Mochi back here. Finley, no. Come on. I'm good at stealth, and I've already got a key to your place. Who else is gonna go? Since when are you good at stealth? I'm so good at those gear games. Give me a cardboard box and I'll be good to go. That's their third Metal Gear reference. <laughs> and I think almost all of them had to do with Finley, probably because she's the video gamer. <laughs> I don't even know where to start with that. Look, doesn't matter. You stay and rest. Finley, Landry, Reese, go on your missions. I'll protect Avery. I can help too. I know some first aid. I can help with your ankle. 
Guys, I'm just some screw-up kid. You don't have to do this for me. Of course we do. Yeah. You're our screw-up kid. We stick together through thick and thin. Tears of gratitude sting my eyes. Don't you know this is the part of the story where everyone comes together like family? <laughs> I never thought I'd have friends like this. My high school friends would have run off the moment someone said, Curse! I love these guys. I vigorously scrub my face. Don't want to get too mushy. I hobble back to the couch. Okay, we can do this, right? Yeah! Promise me nobody's gonna get hurt, okay? Please, give us more credit than that. Yeah, this guy will be sorry if he underestimates us. Then we enact our plan. Reese, Landry, and Finley head out together. It's weird to see them walk away from the cafe as humans. Hayes vanishes into the bathroom for the first aid kit. Mason dips into the kitchen and I hear a horrific screeching noise like metal against linoleum. What is she doing? She returns triumphantly. She smirks at me, or more accurately, at the dumb gawking face I'm making. Blocked the door. With what? An industrial range? She gives me this self-satisfied smirk, then paces in front of the front door and windows like a sentry. Oh my god, who needs magic? She could snap that guy in half with her hands. <laughs> she totally could. Let's see it happen. Hayes is back with bandages and a bag of ice. Gingerly, he removes my shoe and rolls up my pant leg to get a better look at my ankle. I'm glad I was wearing socks that don't have holes. <laughs> Ugh, my ankle doesn't look great, but it could be worse. I don't think it's sprained, just twisted. You need to rest. He slowly, neatly wraps my ankle with a stretchy bandage. When he pins it in place, it's like a pro's work. A professional ankle wrapper? Do you know a lot of first aid, Hayes? You're way calmer than I expected. I studied in scouts. Injuries and things don't bother me. Never have. Not everything makes me feel anxious. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm glad you're here to patch me up. He smiles sheepishly, but averts his gaze to the ground toward the ice pack. He props my foot up on one of the puffy ottomans, then places the ice on my ankle. Oh my god, that does feel good. Now just keep it elevated and rest a little, and take the ice off in 20 minutes. Thanks again, Dr. Hayes. <laughs> I'm gonna make some coffee. I think everyone will need it. I stress nap once Hayes goes back upstairs. Sometimes I need a system shutdown before I can think straight again. I think even the cats know something's up because they all swarm me. I've got two on my lap and the others pile around me. Oh, I want a candy puddle. Where are my kitties? I want a candy puddle. It's soothing to hear them and feel their little paws stretch out at me. I hope it's helping them too. It's not good s Excuse me. It's not good sleep. Anytime I nod off, I have horrible visions of Noct turning Finley or the others to rust and I startle awake. This is a mess. Such a huge mess. I try to shut out the thoughts by remembering the Finley-sanctioned blast timeline. It's not much, but I feel a little better. Somehow I nod off just for a moment. I shoot awake when I hear the door fly open. Is it knocked? Did he come right through the front door? Can witches come in uninvited, or is that just vampires? Oh, it's Finley again. She bounces the door against her hip, since her hands are full of cat carrier. The fussy lump inside is unmistakable. Where's my fussy lump? Candy! Wow, you are so whiny. Hold your pants on, baby. Moochie! Did you have any trouble? Is everything okay? It's fine, though I did have to lure him into the carrier with treats, and he hated every moment of being in there. So, same as always. That's good. How about it? Should I unleash the beast? <coughs> yeah. Mochi, if you cause any trouble with the other cats, you're going back in. Got it? Like he's gonna choose now to start listening. Finley opens the carrier, and he shoots out like a furry cannonball. Then he stands there, dumbstruck. He's got his own troubles now in playing nice with the cafe cats, but at least he's here. That's one less thing Noct could use against me. Once she's done, I grab Finley by the shoulder and drag her to the couch. What? Avery? No, just stay here for a second, okay? Just please. I tangle my fingers in her hair and bury my face against her shoulder. Bob is bothering me. Bob wants on my lap. Bob, you wanna? I was worried. Aw, Avery. I didn't even have time to get scared. I kept thinking about how this guy hurt you and, oh, I'm gonna get angry again. Fussy lump. Big fussy lump. I kiss the underside of her chin. She breathes a deep, tired sigh. It's okay. It's all gonna be okay. Yeah, it is. I see movement in front of the cafe. Is it? No. There's too many people for it to be knocked. Anyway, I'd know that hat anywhere. It's Reese and Landry back already with Graves. 
or what used to be graves. Now he looks like a forgotten statue, flaking bits of rust off as they haul him up the sidewalk. Are their hands glowing? I squint to get a better look. Oh, they look like garden gloves? Glowing garden gloves? They set graves in front of the cafe, then come inside. Reese peels his gloves off, then helps Landry with his. Nobody touch him unless you're properly enchanted. The rust spreads easily. Are you going to leave him out there? He looks like a huge, ugly yard gnome. Not that I'm going to say anything. We can't risk the cats coming over to investigate. They might touch the rust, and Reese said it could spread to them, too. I can't take him upstairs. Dracula would be at risk. Poor Dracula. I know she'll be heartbroken. So now what do we do? We get ready. Who here knows a thing or two about magic? I mean, I know the two of us have learned a thing or two, though we're hardly experts. I guess we'll do the best we can to teach you, though. Speak for yourself. You can't teach me anything I don't already know. Well, yeah, Reese, how do you know so much about this? I've learned a thing or two in my time. I'm not assistant manager just because I'm good at accounting. I have no idea what kind of magic you've been learning, Avery, but I won't let you steal the spotlight. I'll beat him. Haven't you been listening? He beat Graves. We've got to team up and come up with a plan. We fight alone, he picks us off. We all jump him, we have a chance. See, Mason gets it. Well, what do you propose? Haven't you ever cram studied before finals? We'll do that using the tried and true Gray method. We shove enough magic in our short-term memory to beat him. We probably forget it five minutes after, but who cares by then? We'll be done. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Got a better one? See, it'll be fine. I'm basically an expert here too. I got through half my book reports without even opening the book. Just take the time to study properly. All right, someone get me the book and I'll get this started. If I ever needed confirmation I don't want to be a teacher, I got it today. <laughs> I try leading a sort of haphazard class on magic, but it's like herding cats. Reese keeps correcting me. I think Mason fell asleep. Landry keeps getting distracted and wandering off. Finley's interested, but she's also interested in her phone. Hayes is too shy to actually try anything. Hell, it looks like Mochi's paying more attention than they are. This is important, so I keep trying, and I think they do too, but I'm exhausted. <sighs> Look, I'm beat, y'all. I gotta take a nap. Can you just sort of, like, independent study? Sure, you should get some rest. We can take it from here. Yeah, that sounds great. But we have to prepare to fight. We don't even know if this guy's coming. We could, uh, take guard shifts. Right, we'll go in shifts. Avery can rest, two of us can stand guard, and the rest can move the cats into the basement. The uh, basement? Why? I don't want any of them in the line of danger. They're safer if they're away from us. I doubt Noct cares about cats. He won't go chasing them. Ugh, but then we gotta herd them all down there. We can do it if we work together. You two better get Mochi and Dracula, too. I don't want to leave Dracula alone. She must be scared. Sure. Can you get her and keep the cats company? No. I'm taking first shift as guard. Graves would want it that way. I'll take care of them, Landry. The cats like me. Great. I'll take the other guard shift. Everybody else, relax. Hey, Jeff. Welcome back. Reese and Landry guard the door. I fall back on the couch. Napping is all I feel ready to contribute. I stare at the ceiling while I listen to Finley and Mason herding cats. Glad I have an excuse to not do that. I hear the soft sound of footsteps approaching and then silence. Not long after that, I feel the gentle peck of a kiss against my forehead. Scoot. Thought you were watching cats. Eh, Mason and Hayes are taking care of it. Scoot. I move over and Finley takes the space I'd been occupying. She pats her lap. I take the invitation by flopping across her legs. Ugh. I know. I feel her fingers sift through my hair. Man, I could die right here. I know. It's gonna be okay. Ugh, you're spoiling me. I know, right? Don't get used to it. I'll make it up to you. I'll do something really nice. Just name it. Avery. This sounds serious. Enough that I pop an eye open. She is serious. If we make it out of this, will you? What? This is so sudden. Will you cosplay with me? Oh my god. What? I think you'd make a good Ikea. Or there's other games you might like. I mean, that's it? Of course I will. <gasps> Perfect! I had this one group in mind too, and I think you'd... Crash. The unmistakable sound of glass breaking. I shoot up so quickly my blood can't keep pace. The room swirls. I feel sick. Footsteps thunder from somewhere. The basement? I'm not sure. 
What was that? It came from upstairs. Oh, good thing we moved Dracula. Should we, like, should we go see what it was? Don't you dare. I'll go. The stomping storms close enough to reveal its source. Mason, wild-eyed but ready. No, I will. What? No. Try and stop me. Well, okay, but be careful. Hmm. Mason stalks upstairs, fit to kill. I think staying down here is the right idea. Time passes. At first, nothing. But then muffled voices. Thumping. Maybe staying down here wasn't the right idea. I exchange glances with Finley. Even Landry and Reese have noticed. Landry puts his hand on Reese's shoulder and gives him a firm, grim nod. Reese, keep guard. Right. With those long strides, he's already at the stairs. Finley launches from the couch after him. Wait, I'm coming too. Avery, stay there. You aren't fit to be tromping up and down like that. What? No, I can go too. Crash. Another window shatters. Something falls to the ground hard. I wince at the noise. It's like someone threw a car off the roof. There's debris everywhere. Landry flies up the steps to the apartment. The rest of us rush to the front window. It's knocked. He's on the ground, pinned under something metallic. What is it? He pushes it aside. No. Reese throws open the door and charges it knocked in the statue? Did Graves have a statue in his apartment? I don't remember anything like that. Kind of looks like a... Oh, God. What? What is it? That's... You bastard! Are you gonna rust us all one by one? What's it gonna take? What would you have me do? You're being so difficult. She didn't even have magic. <laughs> she didn't need it. Push me out a window, that one. What fire. What muscle. But you, what's a little gossip gonna do to me? Ugh! Reese pulls something out of his pocket, but not just there before we see what it is. Reese's hand is frozen in place. Rusted. We have to stop him! She strains to pass me, but I throw my arms around her waist to stop her. Don't! He'll turn you to rust! Who cares? I have to block his ass. He'll get everyone if I don't. Do it from the door. Don't leave. She pries my hands away and charges the entrance, standing wide-legged in the door to block his way. Knox seems preoccupied with admiring his handiwork as the rust slowly creeps up Reese's arm. Blocked! Her voice rings out like a church bell, clear and deafening, and the telltale gust of wind blasts from behind her. The wind hits him full on, but it barely moves his hair. He raises an eyebrow and stares directly at, through, us. I, I don't think it worked. What it has to! Blocked! Again, the wind. Again, he's... Darling, I hate to ask, because you're trying real hard over there, but what are you doing? Can't understand that gibberish. What? What am I doing wrong? Now's not the time. We gotta think of something else. It's hard to think on your feet when one of them's all messed up. Hello, welcome. Happy Valentine's. There's a little trash bin by the door. I grab it and slam it to the ground in front of the entryway. I think about a wall. To-go cups and other detritus climb together and cobble their way into a barricade. It's gross and smells like old coffee grounds, but it feels kind of strong. I can still see knocked through the window. He seems amused. Jerk. What are you doing? Mason and Reese are out there. I know and I feel bad, but they're rust already and we gotta figure out how to save ourselves and the cats. He's not even trying to come inside. Do you need help? Mom? Sounds like Lola's trying to mess with the cats. I'm not gonna take any chances. We gotta stall while I think of something. I could make a sword out of some soda cans and fight him, but it'd rust. Or maybe a plastic sword. You aren't a little kid playing pirates. You aren't gonna do anything with a plastic sword. And don't act like you have to run in there yourself. We've gotta do something. If your magic doesn't work on him, we're left with mine. I'm not gonna let you touch him, even if it's with a weapon. Look at you. We have no idea how to fight. I hate to admit it, but she's right. Okay. But if your blocks don't work, what do we do? I don't know. We try to push the couch in front of the window, but neither of us is strong enough. I guess it doesn't matter. Noct hasn't touched the trash barricade. I guess we're stuck. Either Noct gets us or we die of starvation and the cats eat us. Wow, you went from zero to morbid real fast. It happens. Finley paces back and forth, mumbling to herself and ruffling her fingers through her hair. Um, she doesn't even look up. 
I wonder how long it would take for 14 cats to get hungry enough to eat us. I don't get why it didn't work. I put as much power as I could. It should have compelled him the same way as the internet troll. Maybe he didn't get it. Like, he doesn't look like a guy that uses the internet much, you know? <gasps> Avery, that's it! You're a genius! What? For what? I was making a joke. No, no, you're right. He can't get blocked if he doesn't have something to block. Maybe it has to mean something to the person I'm using it on. I have to find a word or phrase that gets to him. Like what? I don't know. What do old dudes do if they don't go on the internet? I don't know, like fix motorcycles, read war books, watch westerns? He doesn't look like he does any of those things. I don't know any old TV shows. There's gotta be a catchphrase. Okay, I'll distract him while you think. I thought I told you not to fight him. I'm not fighting, I'm distracting. I kick the center of the trash barricade as hard as I can. I think about, I don't know, fireworks, shrapnel, something. Trash explodes outward. It's kind of gross. Styrofoam fragments sharpen into edges and fire at knots. He blocks most of them, but he can't block them all. One hits him on the cheek. It didn't draw blood, but I can see a well. <sighs> I march outside, garbage in hand. I fashion a to-go cup into a sort of javelin, willing the cardboard to expand and curl around itself in a long lance. I throw it. It completely and utterly misses. Crap, 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 crap. That all you got, kitten? Ain't too terribly impressed if I'm being honest. This is gonna be over real quick. Well, you know how the old song goes, life is but a march toward death. He whistles an awful song, dour as a dirge, as he swings the bat. I barely duck in time, or maybe he swings slow enough for me to dodge. I think he's playing with me. Something nags at the back of my mind as he whistles. He grabs my foot and rust creeps up my soul again. I kick the shoe at him. It kick hits him square in the face. I dive back into the cafe one shoe lighter. Just as predicted, Knox stops outside the door. I throw the whole trash can at him for good measure. Hey, Finley! Yeah, you okay? I haven't thought of it yet. What song is Life is But a March Toward Death from? What? Why would I know? I don't listen to weird metal. No, no, doesn't it sound familiar? Help me think. Um, um, I don't know. It sounds like a Gravesism. Isn't that something he says? I mean, I guess, but why would he say that? And then I remember. We both remember. They had a song that was called something like Rose Baptism. I only remember the parts that weren't in French, but no, 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 no. Uh, it went something like, no, no, this is traitorous. My own pupil betrays me. Ahem, trapped within my own mind, something, something in French. My will dissolves to blood, the soul's red rind, life is but a march toward death. Finley and I shouted at the same time, Spider Coven! Holy crap, holy crap, he's the band guy! How else would he know that? I don't know, just try it! Uh, oh, okay, here goes nothing, I guess. Finley marches up to whatever detritus remains of the barricade. She cups her hands around her mouth. Wait, wait, I have a better idea. I fashion another to-go cup into a megaphone. There, now go for it, tiger. Ahem. Trapped within my own mind. God, that line is so bad. I can feel her embarrassment all the way over here. Or maybe that's just my embarrassment. She doesn't look pleased to be saying it for sure. Nock doesn't look pleased to be hearing it. His lips curl in distaste. There goes the gust of wind. As it hits him, it blows his hair back, more than it was already, and he freezes. He looks startled. His hands fall slack. He drops the bat. Something, something, I don't know French. <laughs> Obviously, that doesn't know, do anything, but the wind kicking up after her magic always looks really cool. My will dissolves to blood. Noct looks dumbfounded, like he woke up from a deep nap. He touches his nose and stares at his fingers. Is... did that make his nose bleed? Hold on, don't do anything more yet. I think that's enough. Noct's bat rolls away, forgotten. The further it gets from him, the more it seems to dissolve? Metal shouldn't do that. It melts like cotton candy in the rain. What? I can't... What's happening? What'd you do? I, I don't know, I just wanted to stop him. You locked away his magic. He can't maintain it anymore. <gasps> Graves! See? You can hear me. The rust is weakening. Sure enough, rust is flaking off him like cheap plaster. 
It falls off his body in chunks, revealing the real graves beneath. You've lost, Noct. Leave. I... Without your magic, even my apprentices could dispatch of you. Go, and never darken my door again unless you want the rest of you to dissolve. Ugh, damn. Graves, we ain't over yet. Just go. He does. Reeves and Mason, cracking out of their rust-like Easter eggs, stare him down as he leaves. Relief floods over me. I feel myself wobble. Avery, whoa! Before I can topple, Finley grabs me in her arms. She's stronger than I thought. I got you, baby. Thanks, sweetie pie. Aw, you did it! You called me a cute nickname, too. Mm. <laughs> I sleep for a whole day after that. I think we all needed time to recover. Finley got some rest, too, though not as much as me, since I ended up passing out in her bed. She tells me I took up so much space she slept on the floor. Graves stopped by and tried to explain everything. I didn't really get it. Something, something, curses, grudges. I don't know. I think it was a weird lover's spat or bandmate spat. I don't know. All I know is it's not really my problem. Not anymore, at least. I think if you actually do the route with Graves, you learn the whole story. Whereas if you do the other side routes, you just kind of get the, the, the hints, the overview. Finley's really bummed to see her cat form go, but Graves says it doesn't have to. She's gonna train with him to learn how to transform at will. In the meantime, she's making more human videos. The two of us started a series where we play video games together. Our first video was us playing Glass Zone. At night, though, she kind of got a taste for justice after Knocked and the Creeper thing. She keeps saying it's not right other people out there are getting harassed by internet trolls and stuff. She's taken up this mantle to protect people who are in trouble with that kind of thing. It's really noble of her. I admire it, so I've been coming along too. She keeps trying to come up with hero names or costumes for us, but I refuse. If we're gonna do this, we're just Finley and Avery. But I know sooner or later she's gonna wear me down. I don't mind all that much. As long as we're doing something helpful. As long as we're together. <laughs> I think that's the end of that storyline. It's really fun that like, the way the story resolves changes completely based on who you end up with, which is cool, because it makes it so that there's like six different stories that you can play through. Whereas, you know, some visual novels like Hakuoki changes the romantic arc, but the main plot line is the same. So you really don't see a lot that's different. I really like that this one did that. It has a lot of really cool stuff to it. It just, it's great. It's super fun and we did it. Uh, it was way longer than I thought it, well, no, it was not that long. Um, no more stream tomorrow because I will be resting my voice and working on projects, but uh, should have another Shin Megami Tensei video soon. Uh, I know this is different than what I usually do, but I thought it'd be fun for a uh, Valentine's thing. Um, maybe we'll make that a thing every year, play through all the visual novels I have. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, you should check it out, purchase it. It's not that expensive and I'm pretty sure it's available on PC, Steam, that kind of thing. Um, thank you to members and supporters of the channel. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, if you like my work and you want to support it, you too can become a member. Links are in the description. You can buy my books and you can download the ebooks for free if you want to check them out. Uh, all at my coffee, which is in the description as well. Um, I think that is it. Thanks again, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.